y'all not coward. Y'all being real about what y'all doing. So. Talking about some more podcast medicine, man. You know, we had to fill your prescription. Y'all be having high tolerance for this real shit. So, they just some more medicine, man. Every Tuesday, every Thursday. I go by gas to hate them, man. I'm Mr. Mina, the instigator, brother. And we got a special guest in the building, man. I'm talking about real raw nigga from the Sound Wall, man. Let them know who you is, big brother. Fire and cold in the building. Thank like the you dog, for man. Having me. That's what it is, man. Let them know. Let the people know where to find you at. In the seven, on the street, every on the, day. On the social media. Coal Investigative Services, LLC, is my ad. That's what it is, man. Fact, like we fact, never fact, left, fact, you heard? Fact, 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 yes, sir. Let's go. Let's get yeah. it, man. But I prefer to meet niggas in the street, though. Right, right, right. That's so it could be up. real and tangible. That's what's up, dog. I appreciate you coming through at the same time, dog. Uh, it's an honor. Facts. Vice versa. For sure. Let's get this shit. Let's rocking. dig in on the real. Come on, bro. No bullshit. Dig in, nigga. All the way real shit. Okay, who, you know, we, 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 we got Byron Cole on here, you know what I'm saying? And for people outside of New Orleans that may not understand, you know what I'm saying? Byron Cole is a man that speaks his mind. Say what he got to say, stand on the business on how he feel about it, whether you like it or don't like it. No filter. And at the, No filter. Yep, never. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, you know what I'm saying? I just want to get into a little bit of who is Byron Cole and where Byron Cole came from. Like, you know what I'm saying? Can you give me a little bit of explanation? Of who sure, was? sure. So first I want to say, that every man that's a quality man speaks his mind. Now, the no-filter part, that's subjectivity. And, and we can all grow and mature at all times, right? But what I was going to say is I really do have a filter, right? I was just explaining to him that <clears throat> I've had a problem my whole life where I've been able to discern things and decipher the situations I'm in far beyond other people seeing what's developing and me responding quickly for my longevity and people not understanding it. And then same people hanging with that same person till he stung each one of them. <laughs> and then they came back and told me, damn, B, how you doing? Right, you right, know? right. And so I have a filter, man. You know, you a grown man. He for sure a grown man. Do you agree with everything I say? No, I don't. Do I agree with everything you say? Done. Have we disagreed with each other and agreed to disagree? How many of times? Did we ever disrespect each other, either one? Never. Did, I, did you ever have to check me uh, for this reputation I supposedly got for trying to handle you like everybody say I, I am? No, we haven't. We haven't. And, and, you know, I think all that play a part with me just having respect for any man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I good. need to give it back. Yeah. That's all I need to give it back. So I had to start there. Um, so who am I? I am a well-traveled Black Panther Cub. My mother was the first black woman to be president of the NAACP. I was raised an activist, which I don't use that word anymore because that's turned into grant money. I'm an abolitionist, but I never had a choice about which way I was going to think about things. If mama saw me just yesing her and still trying to carry the trend, you feel me? That's how we was really raised. You're going to do this. My house is not a democracy. Call your Paul. You heard me? Right. And so I didn't get a ticket one day and just decide to speak out for my people. I meet people and elders all the time that say things to me like, bruh, you remember one time my wife is a, uh, can vouch for this. Bro, you remember one time your mama helped my grandma in a desire project? Right. I said, when? Well, we was like 12. And y'all was back there. We was outside. She was helping my grandma. Duh, duh, duh. That's how I was raised. Right. I had some onesie, feet and all, Spider-Man pajamas, and I had Kermit the Frog. And everybody that works in the system in New Orleans even the people that can't stand me, even the people that couldn't stand my mama, cannot deny a many a night 
I had my head on my brother's lap in central lockup while my mama was getting somebody child out of jail for free. It wasn't even her job. She was just the president of the NAACP, which is no salary, and still had to go to work for the city the next day, and I still had to go to school. And so I'm just a man that's tired of bullshit. And the older I get, the more tired of it I get. And so I wanted to start with that. That's not a disclaimer. That's just fact about me not having a filter. That's bullshit. Right. I respect everything that deserves it. Right. And I'm, I'm one of the most humble, loving creatures on the planet. I get it. Right, get right, it. right, right, right. But... See, that's that that's that's kind of the thing that a nigga was like saying like off camera when a nigga was like, Man, we, we gonna be joking, we're gonna be jokes and shit. Yeah. So it wasn't literally like Oh, like, I ain't like, mad. Like, I no, ain't I'm just mad. saying so a nigga ain't gotta like go to ten minutes on, you know what I'm saying, like trying to explain oh, yeah. a filter because well, yeah, it just was, was it just was a joke, you know what I'm saying? Like niggas might say that about me. That nigga oh, dead yeah. say what he want. But shit, I definitely got a filter. I yeah, shit, say what he want. You, you know what I'm saying? So so, yeah, so, 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 up. so, so, even with speaking or having a filter, filter only mean that you, both of y'all possess respect for, yeah. for, for mankind, period. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And the only way it gets disrespectful is I feel like you disrespected me on some level as a man that makes me go left. That may seem like there's no filter. Well, I just want gas to understand my perspective of it, right? I'm deep in the heart of the seven. I'm not going to get on here talking callous and crazy. And I don't have no filter and this and that. Because, see, nigga just ran up on me on my way to church a couple months ago, Sunday morning, with a real banger. I had to run down the street in my Bruno Maglis, you heard me? So I ain't out here putting out no airs about I'm just, you know, untouchable and no filter. I'm keeping it 100. I'm checking whatever disrespect me for sure, if, even if it's the end of me. But I got a filter. That's, I ain't take it the wrong way. This is my nigga for real yet. I fuck with him, but long before this here, right, social right, right. media. When you 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 be like emphasizing that point, like a lot of niggas don't fuck with me, other people who don't. Because you fuck get with a me. lot of views, why, bro. No, no, no. I'm saying you emphasize why you why, why. What's the biggest misconception of why the people don't fuck with you? Uh, or you feel one? like that? Because, well, first of all, half the people fuck with me. We feel love all day. People offer us free shit that I turn down all day, but. The reason why, man, is because they confuse me with that Instagram social content creator nigga that got the cash app pinned, that move for mercenary reasons, right? When me and my wife are spending our money, every time you see me helping a family, a little boy or something, I don't know, I ain't getting no organization money, even though my organization is legitimate. Usually the funding come out of our checkbook, though, you feel me? And so they think I'm in some kind of competition like it's a rap battle when I'm the only one that's really in the street, for real. You know, some of them niggas ain't even in the city. But I got to be questioning my DM because I'm saying one perspective of what's happening in New Orleans and this nigga that live in Texas saying another fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the media got them niggas gassed up. They don't know how to see what's real. They don't stop and look at the signs like Pac said and all that shit's a culmination of what got them fucked up really right 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 when you when you ran for the mail right yeah when you said i was running what's the percentage that you had in mind that i'm gonna become the mail zero real shit my mama had already prepped me i said this is a conversation me and my mama had before we knew it was over for her her, right? One day I come in the house, pocket straight, I'm happy. She done cooked me some shrimp omelet for breakfast and I'm, I'm feeling good. So I wakes up, I'm about to go have a great day and I say, Mama, I'm finna run for me, I'm gonna win. When I turn around, my mama's face was all bent up. She said, Boy, no, you not. I said, Mama, why would you say some shit like that and crush me? She said, Byron, this, we gotta be realistic. She said, you ain't never ran for nothing. She said, ain't a motherfucker in the world that come to New Orleans and ran for mayor or uh, city council or some shit for their first time and won. She said, but we can get you some, some good feedback, but you're not going to win your first election. I said, even with you, mama? She said, even with me, nigga. She said, you ain't proved nothing to the people. I'm Mama D. You Byron. Let's go show them who you are. 
Right. I said, okay. So she said, you're going to run for District D. I said, all right, mama. I think she didn't know Eugene and that little boy was going to run. I think I could have won that one, though, for real. But I had to run for mayor because I needed to have a citywide conversation. And though nobody will admit it, I made Latoya change her whole strategy. I can tell you what I mean. She said she was going to take down the cameras, which she didn't. Uh, I was saying that I was going to use the street to solve problems in the neighborhoods from the leaders of the real organizations in the neighborhood. She brought in Willie Muhammad from the Muslims, but they ain't get accomplished nothing. I said I was going to incorporate the community, all the pillars that I knew to be real from being from here and seeing them operate and know who was true. She brought in influencers that all of them got booked and blessed. You know, I pushed her on the minimum wage. She actually changed that after I won the wages debate at Ashe Center, and they refused to publish that. They told me, you did great. You won. But they didn't put it in the media. They didn't document it. Yeah. Same thing happened to me in the East. Ms. Dawn Abair, that organization she runs, I won the debate hands down. Whole crowd said it. The responses said it. They told me they didn't have enough data to publish that I won. They was paid. When I said, why would LaToya need a million dollar pack to run for mayor? <clears throat> when traditionally no one ever has spent more than $485,000. <laughs> Legitimately. Now, we don't know what happened under the table. But saying they had it up front, no one's ever had more than $500,000. She come bust through the door with a million. You know why? Booked and blessed, got the million. All the other people who you still saying, great job, t they got some of that million. And so I had to jump in the mayor's race to be a part of a citywide conversation to begin this awakening everybody saying they're getting from these content creators. Right. <laughs> right. And, but I'm the only one got whooped. I'm the only one had to fight felony charges. I'm the only one got arrested. I'm the only one paid a bill. Out of all of them. Right, right. I be saying, you know, the comments and shit, and from the people who be having a perspective, man, why Bob and always coming at T.D. like that so hard? Like, right. T.D. had false charges put on me. Man, what if I told you that I can prove with the court transcript that the NOPD set me up and was bold enough, dumb enough to admit it in the court transcript. And then another judge interfered in my case in a whole different section. And they offered me 20 year was the plea deal in Angola for a false charge. After I just lost my mama and they know I'm a single father to my daughter. What have I told you that? You believe that? Because if you say no, I'm bringing all my paperwork to the next show. No, no, no. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> so it, it got, I, I speak for the people too. So it's, it got people like. Did no, you T, don't. Did, do, I do. I'm, Go ahead. That nigga's stupid. Did, did T directly do that to you? Oh, that's how you felt. Listen. Listen. So I'm writing right now some things that I'm going to publish out loud. If you see me at the courthouse, you see me saying no justice, no peace. When I stop saying no justice, no peace, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying Davalier is a criminal. Who is that? Judge Davalier, Section B. I'm saying Davalier is a criminal. I've been saying it on social media for four, three years. I've been saying it to her face every time I see her for three years. I've been saying it in front of the courthouse for three years. She ain't never said a word. You know why? Because I got the paperwork. I done saved it on my email and my hard drive. I done sent a copy to my daddy out of town. My wife got a copy. Because that's how dirty they play. I can prove that your chief justice is a criminal. That's why my life is dangerous. The street ain't dangerous to me. The people love me. It's the boule that I'm having an issue with. The suit wearing niggas. Me and my wife walked through all the cuts in the seven. The nine, uptown, second lines, 
And I ain't, this ain't, I ain't saying this to be, there's no challenge. We get love out there, huh, babe? I have to tell vendors, man, let me pay you. I appreciate that. But if I'm ever hungry, I'm going to come. I appreciate the love. So they can know I'm not that social content creator nigga. I'm out here taking care of myself like a grown man. And because God told me a long time ago when I was four that this was my pathway. And my grandma kept telling me I had to be a preacher. And I kept saying, no, mama, I don't think so. I think I could do good in other ways. And so let me tell you what happened for me. I was working for the school district and got a six-figure settlement with a monthly stipend when I left. And so I came home because I was straight. And I thought my world was okay. And then my mom died, and I gained two properties. So I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Really. And I get no stipend or reward other than the satisfaction of knowing I'm living out my purpose. You know, I don't require nothing. You know, I, I've worked post-conviction cases that lasted six, seven years, man, where I didn't charge a dime, but I really did the work. And they'll, they'll speak for me. Right, right, right. That's, that's man... That's a hell of a nigga, one in a million type nigga. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm the type of dude, brother. Like, I, I, I just don't see no nigga waking up in this world worrying about another nigga with no. Check me out with no financial gain. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about a nigga from a therapist to a lawyer. I just Check it out it to, to a preacher. None of that. You know, I don't, I don't see no nigga doing something just for a person with nothing to gain. So if you I'm do glad that, you said you're, that. you're a hell of a nigga. Uh-uh. I'm glad you said that. No, I'm not. I'm a smart, humble, obedient nigga. Bruh, I turned them down, but I could have went to the Stanley Cup. I done been to the NBA championship, the World Series a couple times, Super Bowl a couple times, all before I was 18. Africa, Hawaii, Europe, all before I was grown. You hear me? I was selling weed as a young man. Me and him joked earlier, but my brother right here, one of the reasons why I respect him is because on the quiet, he know I've been, you know, and not balling, but a grown-ass man about mine. Right? He even asked me one day, man, how you move like that? I said, I joke with him. I said, we from New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? But this was years ago, huh? Right. All right. And so, when one day, this is a true story. If we ever meet my daddy, you're going to see. It's a true story. One day, my daddy wanted me to do something. And uh, he said, you're going to need a couple thousand. You run over there and take care of it. I said, all right. I pull out a knot in my pocket, about 10 racks. My daddy said, boy, they're going to kill you. What you running around that kind of money for? My daddy's a preacher. And I ain't going to lie, I wish I could say it was on some God level, but it was really just out of respect for my Paul. He started saying, man, you're too wild. Da, 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 da. You need to do this. Go get you a real job. Da, da, da. So other than the Navy, I never had no job other than the school district. Because when I drove trucks, I drove a truck for my partner. And I could tell him when I didn't want to work and when I was going to work. And it was really like a temp job, but I knew the owner. Like a hustle. Yeah. And so, yeah, like a hustle. And then, you know, you might not know, but he know I'm addicted to scrap and metal. And I know how to break everything down and make money out of what you call trash. And I love to do that, too. So I'm self-sufficient, you know. And... Two jobs, man. Then I come home, and I was just telling them that's my dichotomy. I come home, I'm back home now. Niggas know me. I'm about to get lied. Then I lose my mama, right? The two properties, you know. I start to see. This is what. This is really what it is. This is where I'm really supposed to be. That's what I said earlier. I meant that. Like, I, the way... I'm really supposed to do this. My grandma used to say, if you don't count your blessings, you lose them. So for me to know that I ain't really had no hard time for nothing in my life 
and been all over and seen shit that niggas dreamed about seeing and had things they dreamed about having and that my wife is beautiful and that my daughters all got degrees except for the one that's working on a degree. And that my sons, they working at it. One of them getting a degree and one of them decided to go get a job. But he's still a real cat out here and he's a real nigga. You feel me? That's all that matters. Yeah. And so, if I wasn't at the courthouse, and I said this, I don't be trying to lie. I said this on my live. Go look about four days ago. I said, you motherfuckers think y'all going to wait me out? If me and my wife wasn't walking that lap in front of the courthouse, we'd be walking to that city park. We really LLC'd for real, get our own bread for real, do taxes for real. Don't have to do nothing but what we need to do for God and our people for real. No, I feel so, that, so, so, you know, I saw that. I saw you on social media and, and, and I said that, I said, damn, but I don't got to be another kind of nigga, you know what I'm saying? Because people wouldn't rally around something when it's just you and your wife. You know, no justice, no peace. I saw you. I was like looking. People laugh. People was ridiculing, saying all kind of shit. But I looked at it from another perspective. I looked at it like, and I, and I think I said it on the podcast that we're doing. I'm like, yeah, Byron was out there with his wife. No justice, no peace for this situation. But it's gonna mean so much more for other shit down the line because they know that this brother is willing to go out there alone or just with his wife and, and, and stand on it. Behind something that he believes in, so you know when it gets to a level where the people as a whole feel like we need somebody to, to, to stand for something that's right, they know that this brother would do it because he did it without a group of people. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that was but, one of the things that but, I advocated about that situation out the gate because that's what I saw. But also they blind to the fact that, and I'm not going, you know, I'm not trying to be cocky because I'm not above the law. And I definitely believe in God and eternal law, right? So I can't just go do nothing crazy or start nothing. But if you scared, you're going to get set up or some crazy shit going to happen to you in New Orleans. I'm the safest nigga in New Orleans to be with because that's the last nigga. I'm the last nigga they're going to try to frame. This is a question I got for, for you, sure. though. What y'all doing that? You and your wife out there walking around saying no justice, no peace. Only y'all two prior to the day that we saw the protesters out there. We're going to speak on that down the line, like, you know, as we get to it. But just when y'all first was out there speaking on it, it was behind Big Bell, right? Yeah, that's, that's what y'all went out there for, or no, what? No, 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 no. Yeah, break I, that down. I went out there for your cousin, your titty. That's, her I'm uncle, glad you spoke on that. Her uncle, uh, my uncle Harry, my cousin. You know, they've been heinous for years. But we get so consumed by the ceremonial victory, right? Meaning they put Israel Augustine on the courthouse and, you know, the couple black judges, but they still following suit, a lot of them. I say all the time, I, so I, first of all, you saw The Matrix? That yeah, movie, the movie. With yeah, Neo, yeah. yeah, I did. My mama was the oracle, dog. I can believe that. She left that, me that's how I respect her. That's how keys. I respect her. Do you hear me? Mama D. And so I can't, certain things I can only say in a certain fashion, but I will tell you this. If you have to go to court, in criminal court, at Tulane and Broad, you only have four and a half judges that you're going to get a fair shake from. And the reason why I say four and a half is because there's four I know for sure that they ain't going to do you no favors if you really a dickhead and you really that motherfucker. But if you come in there humble and you got half a story and you ain't, and you ain't just being disrespectful or looking stupid, they're going to give you respect, right? Right. As a human. Then you got two that that's how I feel about them. But then when I'm not in the courtroom, other people tell me other things. And every time I step in there and sit down, I don't never see that. And so I don't know if we're playing a game or if I should believe in them, and I'm still weighing that. So I, I make both of them a half. So we have the potential to have six, but right now I can only tell you four. And on that note, if you made every lawyer in the city a pie, and that pie was, a, let's say, 100 slices, 
You ain't got but five slices that ain't going to get you food poisoning. That ain't capable of giving you food poison, which means that, you know, if if they ducks in a row and they gave up the last cat and they got some land, yeah, they might could work you this one. They 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 they, they, they do the favors. Yeah, you right. Yeah, and uh, the most of them in that pool because they don't have no clout. And so if I don't know your defense attorney, boy, you're going to jail. Right. Yeah. So with you being out there with just you and your wife. You know, I, I, I want to dig into still how it make you feel to be like, damn, bro, I reached out to a lot of people. I got, I, you know, I asked for a lot of people to come out. I'm willing to put my boots on the ground for it. And, 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 and when y'all show up, it's only y'all too. Is it disheartening to you as like, I can't get this community of people to support the real shit that I'm talking about or what? Like, like, so how do you have the strength to keep going with it's it? It's not matching the love you're saying you get yeah, in the streets. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. It's also, well, so it is matching the love I get in the street because Miss Gladys will give me a plate every day for me and my wife, but she don't got no car. And at 60, she might can't catch the bus down there in the morning and all that. You feel me? Now, it's some other cats that got to go to work, and it's, but that ain't the majority of them. But, but, but wait, we have to, you know, acknowledge that, uh, you know, where I wanted to start with him is the premise is that, so let's say with Bear, right? Break down who Bear is. What's Bear's name? Say it, say it. Cardell Hayes case. Cardell Hayes case. Where the Will Smith lost his life. Football player for the Saints. After hitting Cardell Hayes and rear ending Cardell Hayes and then trying to speed away. You know right. that case? For yeah, sure. Right. He okay. told he wanted to do this plan for the people. Okay. So with Cardell Hayes, I started something, man. How you deal with what you start? And then not just like I started playing in the softball league. I started something that was based on my fundamentals. You feel me? So, I mean, what you mean? That's, no, that's, I'm just saying that's my on, on, on a level of, like, you know, you going out there, you standing for a cause, you know, because it take a lot of strength. I'm not, I'm not saying it to discredit you because, you know, I stood behind you on the level of, like, damn, like, even though the dude didn't get a group of people, it's still him and his wife walking around this courthouse saying no justice, no peace, you know what I'm saying, and standing for that on what you believe in. I'm just trying to see how did it make you feel that nobody showed up besides you and your wife? Like, was it disheartening? I'm trying to explain to you. Listen, so I grew up with my friends catching charges that I thought was my friends, and really they was cool with me so that they could ask my mama to help them sometimes and shit, right? And so I watched my mama. was a true general. Everything they say good about her, she deserve all that. And so when Lamont and uh, Kevin, Big Kev, Big Kev, when Lamont and Kev came to me and asked me to be on the case. You talking about two cent Kev? No, Big Kevin that was with, we'll talk. with oh, better yeah, 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 Big Kev. Oh. When they came because of my social media, which ain't shit, don't mean shit in real, in real life ever. And I explained that to them. But I am a good investigator, so when they came to me with that, I ain't try to front, man. The first thing I told them was, man, this case is bigger than me. And they was like, oh, B, come on. I said, wait, I didn't say I wasn't going to help you. I just said it's bigger than me. So I went and got my mama. My mama sat on all the known evidence for about two weeks. And she a speed reader. She could have read all that shit in two days because it was a little thick, right? And when mama told me she was going to take that case for free, I knew right then and now he was innocent. You stood on it. Well, uh-uh. I stood on it because of mama, but then I started working the case. I got a real contract from Cardell Hayes that I resigned from because they kept trying to weaponize me against him during his trial. So now when I speak, I'm speaking for my city based on laws and infractions. Not just for Cardell. Well, as the Cardell Hayes situation, because they going because Cardell Hayes had two trials, right? Yes. 
So they're going to have some people, like, if he was railroad, he was railroad twice? Yeah. There was a there was an obvious mission from the beginning. So people say things like, <clears throat> where's the other gun if Will shot his wife? But it's not relevant in that proceeding that two people left the scene. Where'd they go? The football player said he ran blocks away to vomit. That's his quote. Does that sound credible? All right. Okay. And the other one that left is a known affiliated gangbanger from L.A. to where when I went to ask questions in L.A. about him, my people who not scary at all said, B, watch, you know, watch who you ask about, dude. Feel me? Right. Who came to court and prior had tattooed tears but had him surgically removed for court. And when he left the scene that night, left his wife. On the scene. You marry, right? Right. You leaving your wife on a murder scene? You know that. Never. Okay. So none of that was relevant in the first case. And they had a white man that was saying that he heard what Cardell said he heard in terms of shots and things, right? They deemed him not good enough credible. to testify. It was incredible. Yeah. They deemed him not credible, right? And then in the second trial, Will's credibility wasn't relevant. Neither was Raquel's. Raquel got on stand and said she couldn't remember how many drinks Will had at any of the places, even though it's documented that he got put out of a place one time that night for being drunk already. And her recollection was she couldn't remember if he had any drinks at any of the spots. And that all flew in court. His credibility was not an issue at all. Nor the people in his party that night, which one of them was an officer that had killed him his father prior to that, and was knowingly riding with Will Smith over the drinking level and with a known gangbanger that he's known all through the city. Right, right, right. Of L.A. Yeah. So were people saying that Cordell was shot from the back? Will was shot from the back. I mean, back. Will, I mean, not Cordell. Will was shot from the back. How'd that play out? You know what I'm saying? Because that, that makes it like... That play out for two reasons. I can just handle, handle that real quickly. First of all, do you know Cardell? I've met him. Okay. Cardell played the drums in his church till he graduated from high school. He was that cat, dude. Okay. Feel me? And so you have to understand his nature. He's not no, he ain't grow up in no projects and shooting back and forth the shit you might have seen where you grew up or what I might have seen where I grew up. That ain't he. That's not his New Orleans. He played the drum every Sunday. So what you think he was doing Saturday night? And how much you think his mama was on him to make sure that he didn't let the church down? And, and it really, that didn't want the issue he ever had, actually. Right. So the responsibility of that alone, right? Right. But All right. So wait, 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 wait. I had to establish that. So now you're talking about a man who's not used to that type of conflict. That is me legitimizing the multiple shots. That's the state he was in. Not, man, I didn't did this more, before. More paranoid. Yes. And if you look at the real forensics of this case, the first shot struck Will here. Do you know what a 4-5 do? It spin people rapidly. You heard me? Or just blow them back. Will was so big, it spun him. Hey, there was no 4-5 spinning thing. What? I ain't never heard of no 4 5 spin. If it hit you right here, if the first shot's right here, think of how really viable that is. Think about it, man. You ever like seen something? If I, if I push you on your shoulder, you're going to spin a little bit. Yeah. A 4 5 bullet. In the shoulder. Yes. You boy, man, you must don't know nobody got hit by a 4 5. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, that's a big old gun, bro. Right. But I, right. I, I can understand what you say it spent them. So it spun them. The evidence show that first shot here, last one's here because he so you, spun. So what you're saying is he spent and then from the spin and dude doing multiple shots. Nigga got shots. hit and turned around trying to run. Nigga ain't get spun. That's what I'm thinking. Nigga, no, nigga it, but see, but see, what's happening around. is you thinking. 
I was an investigator on the case, and I sat through the trial. The position Will was in in the I car. Mean, you know wait, the, yeah, 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 huh? Because it's all oh, verifiable information. You wasn't, you wasn't up. It's all verifiable information through the court transcript. This ain't what Byron think. The position Will was in the car, he couldn't have been trying to run nowhere. That's the point I'm making. That was established. Wasn't trying to run nowhere. So you're saying the first shot? Because of where he was, his body was at. You're saying he got shot first time inside the car? No, outside. That's what I'm thinking. But, but right spent. at the door. But spent. But, but you know, when he got this, hit. And look, I want to say him. something. Because, look, I really respect this family, and I respect you, too. No, I'm just thinking Wait, hold on, hold on. You got to let me say this. You got to let around. me say this. I respect you, too, and I respect the family. But what I want you to know is I respect them so much that everything I'm saying on this podcast is court records. You say, I'm not, Byron ain't said nothing about his opinion yet. Right, and right. I have some serious opinions too. Hey, and, and 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 don't get it twisted, big brother. Your court records, your investigation, and all that—that that ain't stopping me from saying what I think in my opinion, even if it's going against the the facts that you've seen in court. I'm still stating what my what I would think from having a being a street nigga. So I understand that, but I'm still stating what I yeah. if, if, if I got shot, nigga, before, and I've been shot at plenty of times. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just thinking if a nigga got shot. And them bitches coming, I would think a nigga trying to turn around. I don't know where he's probably uh, trying to go. That's what I, that's just what I'm. All I, I gotta thinking. ask you is, all I gotta ask you is, that nigga mad that I'm thinking that because he know no, the facts. Like I ain't, you wait, can't I do ain't that. mad. No, no, no. Listen, I'm not mad, dog. Listen, you need to understand something about me. I'm here to educate, right? I don't mean on this show. I mean my life. Period. In general. Yeah. And so what I need you to understand is, I ain't no bear before this. I ain't no Corey Garrison at all. I ain't no Jace at all, right? <clears throat> but if Bear or Jace or Corey was your cousin and I was sitting on a podcast that's the most popular in your city and I was saying, I think my opinion, and you were telling me straight facts about your cousin, that ain't my opinion, but just, wait, I'm just trying to say, can, Bear can't afford that. My nigga, you said that after I said my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Right. You said, no, I ain't saying what I think. Nigga, I, that just like any other nigga was sitting here before he said, I know that he got facts on something, and I'm stating my opinion. You said you knew the facts after I stated my opinion. Because yeah, that's, what, that's, what, that's what I would think of being a street nigga yeah. and no, no niggas who got shot. That's why we talking about it. And right. forensics ain't telling me, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm from the hood. Forensics not telling me, bro, that I, I, a full five spun the nigga around. What I'm saying about shots... Is documented in the court. First, no, one, first one struck in the front. And so if the man's standing in the door of his car and there's no way to run, nowhere to run. How was he in a running position? Yeah, I ain't arguing that. I'm not arguing. Was, I'm not arguing. Yeah, how, yeah, right. well, how would he be in a running that. position? Yeah. Right, right. I'm not arguing that. So my, my question is this, like with shots being fired, multiple shots to the back of him at the end of the day, you know, and I'm, I, you know, I'm speaking – like, from what people publicly saying, like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, but look, hold up, hold up, hold up, man. Because cause, cause, cause this this what brought the whole conversation up when you asked the nigga about him getting shot in the back. And mm-hmm. then you say, I got to, you, you gave us a prep and rundown. You wanted to establish that. Right. Basically, what I'm saying, I'm kind of thinking that's the reason that you asked that question. Right, because he right? got shot. You, you see what I'm right. saying? That right. you brought that question up with thinking in mind what I'm saying. Correctly, correct, right. correct. All right, I just wanted to yeah, establish so that. Look, like, let me say this, this ain't my what yeah, I'm yeah, thinking. We, like, we, like, this we what, speaking on one accord of calling to what's being out there. A right. nigga, a nigga can only speak on his life and his experiences. This nigga got autobiography, and we just meeting, right? And and I'm not about to get up here and, and get to talking ridiculously, but I'm from the seven world, you feel me? And I've seen a lot of shit, right? And I've seen niggas' reactions to shit, and I've been in situations, right? Yeah, I'm going to stop right there. And some niggas off top can deal with that. Way better than others, and some niggas, even though they real and they ain't scary, they just that, that ain't in them. And some niggas done did it so many times that it ain't nothing. 
so and so Bear was the extreme of the spectrum. We all looking every street nigga in New Orleans is looking at Bear like a street nigga, and Bear has never been a street nigga. His nothing in his life supports that. You can't go find no data, nowhere where this man was a street nigga. That's what I'm trying to tell people. Because he big and had locks and happened to have on a daishiki the night he had this incident. He's been typecast and all kinds of shit that he's not. And I'm an investigator, man. And my mama, that's why I brought her up in the beginning. Because we done heard every story. Niggas lying and leave this out. And and when my mama take a case for free, she done did her homework. She done talked to judges and lawyers and police. And she knew everybody. That's what I meant by she was the oracle. And when she said she was going to take that case, and then I saw her start protesting outside at 70 years old in the summertime by herself. Oh, that's my motivation. That's when I knew that my mama understood this is a precedent case. The issue with Bear is that they don't want to show black men that this is a stand your ground state and that you can defend yourself and carry they don't want to show a black man that when white men have been doing that traditionally, Garner out, ain't he? Where Bear at? Garner followed that man four and a half miles. Bear got rear-ended. With, 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 with all the facts, see, that's that. See, bro, like this is what I be saying, bro. I be I be going through, bro. I've been in jail forever, my nigga, until I reached the adult, bro. So I didn't, I didn't niggas didn't. Well, you started as a youth. Yes, as, as uh, thirteen, nigga, LTI to mama, mama would have came a, got you, dog. Adult. So thirteen up until twenty three, twenty four. So I didn't see niggas coming that bitch, bro, and explain their case down to the T. You know what I'm saying about you know going to the law library, getting the grandfather of the case, and finding mm-hmm. this out to match that. And mm-hmm. this nigga could go home. His shit ain't right, mm-hmm. but he had two, three trials, brother, and they found him guilty in all of them. You understand what I'm saying? I just so explain to you. No, no. Fundamental things. No, do you no, know Raquel? Nah, check me out. Do you know Raquel went somewhere and got the bullet removed? No, I'm not debating. After we requested to get it for the no, forensics? No, I'm not even debating on the case no more. I'm just telling you what I didn't see. So what you're saying that, what was the key points that got him convicted? Because you said, from, from listening that to you, you telling me everything that will stop a nigga from getting convicted. Right. So I'm saying, what was the what key point convicted? that got him convicted? If the trajectory is from the, this was that, this was Brother, that. you're not listening to me. Yeah, I'm listening clear. I saw things happen in this trial that weren't legal. Right. I saw things happen that I've never seen happen in other trials. I saw Raquel bring in, look like Kim Kardashian white girls in the front row. Who's Raquel? The Will wife. Smith's wife. The wife. I saw her bring them. You know, uh, uh, Will Smith. Will Smith wife. You know when you go to trial, For sure. you got a side where the prosecutor sit. When you go through the doors, mm-hmm. the little thing, prosecutor sit here, defense sit here, right? Yeah. In Cardell's case, Raquel walked in there with the skimpy Kim Kardashian clothes. You heard me. With four or five of her friends that look like they out the white girl magazine, you heard me? And dressed like that, right? And sat in the front where Jason Williams sit. The prosecutor. Yeah, right? And I watched three of the male jurors. But they'll stay with it. They sit on that side. The whole time, just looking at them. You feel me? Then they paraded Drew Brees through there, even though it's documented that Drew Brees and Will Smith didn't get along and had to be separated in practice one day because Will was about to handle Drew. You heard me? But none of that was relevant. You hear me? Brought the NFL through there. Made it bigger than. So you think he got railroad uh, because of the case being a high profile case of what the people love as a Saints that, football player. That and the fact that. That's where a nigga getting it. That and the fact that Judge Buris refereed that game. Have you ever sat in a Little League game? Hold up. Hold up. Who, who refereed it? Judge Buris. A judge? Yeah. Well, I'm talking about the trial. I call okay, it a game yeah, on yeah, purpose. Yeah, okay. I'm about to make a metaphor. Listen. Judge Buris ref that game 
like the last little league game you went to in Chalmette from when you brought the Orleans Parish team, and they had 40 penalties against us, and the other team didn't get none. So when I do mention that I think there was a lack in something coming from the defense, I will say in their defense that I think they started off half-hearted, full-hearted, right? But then they kept stopping for it and just them going to the room, and I saw it become more passive. And, if you know, because at first it was objection, overruled, objection, overruled, and me not even being a lawyer, knowing that he really had grounds for real objection, and it was just smashed. And so I think got beat down from that, and I don't know what happened in them private meetings when they got everybody the sitting outside. Oh, oh in the, but, in the, in the, but, but motherfucker come back. The lawyer and DA and yeah, the judge. it was different. Yeah, but the motherfucker come back, it's it a little different. different. Objecting a little more softly than to the point of I'm not objecting at all. So you agree with Big Freedom when she come out and, you know, and talk about the city of New Orleans, things of that nature, how they do business. Like, so you're in Big agreement Frieda with that. Big said that. No, Byron Cole said that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Five minutes before Frida did, and it went viral. Go look. My question is, <laughs> even if somebody I'll said, listen, you. even if somebody said what Go you said. Go look on my page. Listen, no. Byron, even if somebody said what you said, regardless, Frida is a, a known person, so you can understand why the media will probably. Listen, all I can say about that is I've lost respect there. I made a promise to the family that during this ordeal, I won't make it any worse. Barrett don't benefit from me critiquing his people, period, because he loved them. That's his first cousins, right? But I said what I said. But she stood on the same side of what you, what you argue, right? When? Where? When, when Show she, me evidence. When, when she said New Orleans <laughs> is <laughs> corrupted <laughs> and free to say Five minutes that. after me, when I went viral that time? Even at if the it, end? Even if it was that time, y'all was in <laughs> I'm done. Agreeance. I can't do no, no more. No, listen. Y'all was in agreement about the same situation. I promise, Miss Dawn, I can't do no more. But I'm just saying, y'all was in agreement about the same situation. But, but you don't want to be real about it? I'm all the way. I'm, so I'm let me ask you this. Ways. Let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you a question. Who your favorite rapper besides yourself? Uh, my favorite rapper is probably uh, Tupac, brother. All right. If you had a chance right now, who your favorite rapper? Tupac. Your favorite rapper too? Fucking right. Oh man. Listen. Well, he, he young. If you have, listen. <laughs> Two if chains. you had, listen, listen, dog. Keep it one hundred with your dog, like I'm we always do. I, I, that's all the way I know how to do it. Better come There's on. No rap cap. You in this? As, this a business I'm on right here, right? Yeah, yeah. This a business. Right? So you you expect to make some change out of this, right? All the time. If you had a chance one time tomorrow to have. Somebody, you know, I know it's hypothetical, but go there with me. If you had a chance right now, tomorrow, to have somebody promote this business for you right now, right? And it had to be you or Pop tomorrow. The real Pop, not no fake shit. Which one would you pick? Two Pop. All right. And that's what I'm saying. So listen, listen to my point. My point was regardless of if you say it or Frida said it, with, we, with, with us understanding that Frida is a like a, a person that's well Man, known listen, in hip hop. So look, you, you can so understand you go, why they did what so they you did. Trying why to they jam- used free the clip listen, prior to, but I, y'all I, on wait, the same listen, side. Listen, listen, fuck the clip. <laughs> fuck the clip. <laughs> I'm Byron, man. Cold. Can't nobody duplicate <laughs> me. That's what I learned. I don't have to rehearse nothing. My natural reaction to shit appeals so, to people. So, so. Your, your, your disagreement in that is only because you said it first. No, I wasn't even talking about that. What I'm talking about, the fact that Frida can draw a fucking crowd of thousands. Even if he couldn't show up with me, he could have told them motherfuckers, go out there for my cousin with this dude right here. Me and Frida didn't have no issues. I ate Christmas dinner at Frida's house. Frida served me himself. And I got seconds. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, I, yeah. Frida cook. Frida could cook his ass off. Stop flag. Right, man. I ain't lying. I, I don't lie shit. about nothing. Right. Keep it a hundo. And I felt comfortable and well received in that house. And so, look, now you done drug something out of me, so I'm gonna finish it. You know, he got another cousin. Yeah, I'm quite sure. Was, <laughs> no, famous. I'm cousin. just saying, who, famous cousin. Who is famous? Super. 
Okay, soup. You know yeah, 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 soup is. Yeah. Okay, they were right. saying that, that's who bound them out, soup. No, that's a lie. I'm just saying what's in the yeah, air. Yeah, that's, that's what's in the air. Though. That's my issue. You know why it's in the air? Because soup ain't told the truth. I'm going to stop right there. Okay. Well, I don't think she didn't want, if that wasn't true, I don't think she didn't want to put that the ain't, out. That ain't well, the I don't point. think free to put, I don't think super put right. it out. I think the people put no, it out. No, 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 no. That's cap? No, that's cap. See, look, after I say this, I'm not saying nothing else because I love bare people. Over seven years, you get the real relationships with nah, people. Nah, real shit. But let me tell you what the real fucking truth is. The day bear come out of jail, who you saw standing next to him? Uh, free, uh, Super? No, fuck no. Who? You? Me and Pralees. I Well, I saw the cousins and, and all that. I saw family around them too. That, you know, no, that's a we, lie. We're judging off a clip, uh-uh. right? We're listen, judging off clips, listen, right? Listen, listen. That's not true. Bring it up. On the paper, on the news, everywhere. I Be- saw you coming out Bear, the door wait, the whole Bear night. came out holding his son. Right. I was standing on his you left. You was, you was, And the right. dude who owned Pralees was on his right. The other people worked for the jail. We and it was two lawyers. You're right, and I, and I did see that clip. All right. And so I was listen. looking like, and listen, this is what I was thinking. I'm like, what is Byron doing at fucking um, Bell thing? Like, because I didn't think that you had no affiliation they with him directly. Me because I was loyal for no stipend and real. The and family? Yeah, and that's why, no, his friends came asked me first. And I think the reason why Miss Dawn took it seriously is because I told you the truth. The case was bigger than me. So I didn't try to stunt this man's life on the line. I went and got my mama. My mama told them she was going to sit on it, and she she holler at them Friday. But Wednesday, my mama told me, tell them boys, come on. Because right. she had them went and checked, and she knew he was innocent. I did see the clip with you, but I did see the clip with Okay, so the reason Frida why the, the clip is relevant, the, reader, the reason why the clip I is mean, relevant with, with soup and all of is that. because my video that day went viral, and on my video in the background, you hear her saying, hey, cousin. And on my thread that day, that's where that rumor started. Oh, she did. Yeah, she paid the bond. Oh, that's not, but that's why I say she didn't directly say that. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> that's I, all I was saying. She listen, didn't directly say that. He said that already, but it's deeper than that because <laughs> I was noticing that my posts were getting shared for likes, right? So I felt comfortable enough to say, you know, why didn't you? You know, denounce this disclaimer when you know Miss Dawn went got a second job, an older lady that was, you know, getting ready to retire. Though she had to get a second job for her son. You feel me? Right. And his sister working hard, double time, right? And you're going to let everybody believe this, right? Cordially, before I ever said a bad word or anything. Now, look, I'm going to tell you this, bro. If y'all going to put me off, you're going to put me off. I love Miss Dawn. She's been through a lot. I told her I wouldn't say nothing crazy. Whoever else you want to talk about, I we could they could get it. Okay, but I, I can't do that no more. Okay, we're gonna leave that alone. Keith Carroll. What a problem came Let's in go. with Keith Carroll. I, I'm totally confused on it. You know, I know Keith Carroll. Man, ain't you from New Orleans? Yeah, I'm from. You New ain't Orleans. never had a punk have a secret crush on you, man. What's Fuck, up? Not that I know of. What's up? All right. So. No, listen. I'm done with that. Listen, no, no, no. Listen. If he mad, come see fuck. me, ho. So hold up, you I'm saying, done with hold that. Up. So, so, so what you saying? Can't is be you no think, more direct. So what you saying is that you feel like Key Carroll have a crush on you as you know? Nah, it ain't that. Interesting. That's 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 that's, that's, listen, that's, that's why you, no, ask, you ask me. Dick he put it on. Dick sucker is possible. What I'm really saying is that's not. That's not. What I'm really saying Nigga, is... Nigga, that was a bad analogy. <laughs> that was a... Don't put me in it. You can't co-sign that one, I can't bro. co-sign that one. <laughs> because you, you, you asked me, did I ever had a punk that liked me? A crush. A crush. Yeah, it a, wasn't I even like it was a, a crush. A secret crush. I like... How, but how would you so, know? Let me tell you something. This, you how you know. this is how you know. You know this is how you know. This how you know. I'll put this how you know. All them niggas that was running through the project you from, that's fags now, but you used to play and shoot marbles with them, them. Well, I ain't know they yeah. would have had a crush on me. You know, not though. <laughs> you making them niggas have a crush on me right now. Why they was listen. playing with you? No, listen. Why because, they was playing because with Because we didn't know they was punks. Yeah. But to them, that's why they was playing with you. You get it now? Okay, so was you playing with uh, Keith Carroll when you was young? Nah. 
<laughs> he was playing with I'm you. I'm just trying to find now, out now, the look, reason listen, 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 for y'all niggas crazy. But on a serious note, but on a no, serious, on a serious note, note, I did yeah, have a on, nigga on. I went to high school with that used to beat up niggas out here that one day we was getting loaded and just looked at me and said, man, I used to suck dick. And I said, man, what the fuck? Quit playing. <laughs> and the nigga was serious. <laughs> right. A nigga that you played shot marbles with. <laughs> I said I went to high school. Well, I'm just saying, you know, yeah, y'all, y'all was smart. friends. Y'all was just cool. Yeah. Y'all was cool. And y'all was smoking, yeah. and that's what he said. But that back then, so did that fuck you? Did that he fuck you? He was walking up? the two lane. I mean, to Broad and Saint Bernard to the bus stop. Niggas wasn't jacking him. He was fighting niggas, and he was he had hoes. But I'm just saying. I'm just okay saying. with understanding that. The problem I'm trying to find out find out is that I noticed that. For some strange reason, according to watching Key Page and your page, that y'all had a problem. I just don't know where the problem stems Key from. Key got a problem, obviously. Over what, though? Evidently, you got to know what the problem is about. You're an investigator. So I'm quite sure you did an investigation <laughs> to find out Man, what this nigga problem is with me. think you. I'm worried about what a punk thinking and you tripping, that's my real answer to that. I'm outside every day. I mean, he's just saying he just can't understand how a nigga got a problem with a nigga and the nigga you got a problem with don't even know the problem. That's what he's saying. Like, yeah, I don't nigga know. Nigga got the a problem. problem with you and you don't even know the problem. I don't know the problem. Man, I'm telling you, I just told him. So that what's one all fact? Right, all right, the other right, fact all right. is that I'm organic. Okay. That I ain't got to go do messy shit and do all kind of backbiting shit. The other, the other thing is I'm comfortable with myself. I ain't lying about where I work and how much money I got. The other thing is I ain't so fucking. Um, discouraged with myself that I got to get medical surgery. The other thing is, I don't give a fuck who slapped me in my face. They're going to have to beat my motherfucking ass, especially with a nigga recording. You heard me? Right, real talk. Yeah, so I don't know. That's I can't answer nothing but that. Right. Yeah, but I'm just saying, when the shit went left between you and Keith Carroll. I woke up one day, this nigga was talking about me. That's but, my real life but, but, story. But listen. It, when, in a mix of him Who do that about, Punk ass niggas No but listen And they ain't called you And said nothing And after he did that I can't tell you What I said But I called him And said Say look daddy We black support What's happening What you doing And walk around there Without a video Not to front Or do no bullshit Everybody know My phone records I can prove I called him what you doing, man? I don't know you. Why are you talking about me? What the response so, was? So, so what I'm saying... What People he, telling me and my wife... No, talking about what his response was. Listen, was we just josen. It's the internet. Have you heard that, babe? I say, no, we not. Because I'm not getting no checks and no stipends. I'm out here trying to help my people. You trying to fuck with my credibility when I'm not on what you own. Y'all content creators and y'all doing something fighting for y'all supremacy. I'm not in that rap battle. I turned down a job from Mitch. I turned down all kinds of fucking Judas Pence, man. I'm committed to this. That's what I was trying to tell you earlier. When God took my mama from me, I knew, damn, that's where I got to be. I just told you. I was working for the school district, a government job. I left with a six-figure settlement that I gave to my family to keep them strong and a pension monthly. Right. Then my get home thinking, yeah, I got my mama. I'm about to let her raise my daughter. And then, and then my mama died on me. Right. The question I have is like, you know, to try to get some understanding about that particular situation was, what was he saying about you that you felt like was any kind of disrespect or any issue like that? What was he saying? Because I, I was lost. I was, I was more like... I heard you speaking. I heard him speaking. I'm like, damn. I got caught up in the social media content creator buzz, which caused me to fall out with Seven, Chop is Back, The Pastor from We Hate Rats, right? And a few cats because they didn't really know me, but they just thought I was in the pile of that, right? And that's what they all was doing at the time, right? So, first... Me and Chop got into it, right? And after me and Chop got into it, Chop cool with We Hate Rats. So We Hate Rats had the platform, Chop went on there, and the shit went viral. And then next thing I know, Keith saying the things they were saying. But the the thing about it is that we, my wife is my witness, that's why I said we. Me and We Hate Rats, 
I just got off the phone with him yesterday where he made a live and apologized and said that he didn't couldn't verify none of that information and that he was just josen for his cash app. He told me that, huh, big? All right. And then chop. <laughs> What, no, 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 go ahead. Nah, wait, wait, listen, wait. I ain't jostling him. No, 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 no. we laughing that, at the, how it went, but yeah, not, not at that, you. And so listen, I ain't, I ain't dissing him because it take a real man to admit that, man, I said yeah, some I was, shit I was, that I was, I, was, I was fucked up. Yeah, I ain't know if that but shit was why true. You, why, wait, hold why? on. Let me finish. So then one day me and my wife cutting grass and chop walk up to me. So both of these niggas ain't cowards. You feel me? And, and I ain't no way I could have punked them to do this. You feel me? They both made videos saying, man, look, I ain't really know that man. And I got this information from dot, 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 right? So Keith got his information from Miami, a chick named Miami. Yeah, big Miami. <laughs> yeah. And so we just saw Miami at Walgreens, and Miami admitted that she don't got nothing against me and that she thought we was just Josen and that, she didn't take the time to check and see if any of that information was credible. And my wife was sitting right there for that, too. I'm at Walgreens. My wife running there to get a candy bar. She come up to the window when my wife get back in the car. Talk to me for 20 minutes. And then I say, who are you? And she don't want to tell me because she know I know that she gave Keith that information. But admit it to me that she don't have nothing against me and that she should have probably fact-checked that shit. But she thought we was just joking. It's just entertainment was her words, huh? What they were dosing about. Man, these people getting paid. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what the topic, what they were dosing about. Uh, they said, Chop, first, Chop was saying, for, you know, when, first of all, I got to say this, because I want to be real careful about this. Some of them dudes, we done made amends, right? They done admitted that they, you know, that shit wasn't real. But, you know, when New Orleans niggas go to ribbon, like Pac told B- Biggie, I fucked your bitch. So they were saying... There was a rumor that, and that my wife was a hostage, and that I'm on cocaine. Okay, okay. All kinds of shit. Yeah, I heard all that. Yeah, all right. I didn't know that came from there, but I heard that all that. Yeah. yeah all right, all right. Okay, and that Keith Carroll owned my house, and, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know, right. you know, and so I retaliated, and I'm going to be honest with you. I retaliated on the social media because I realized them motherfuckers don't care if it's credible or not. They're josing for money. And I realized that when I retaliate, every time I retaliate, I sell 20 T-shirts at $60 a while. And I ain't going to let them just eat. But really, I don't have no real beef. Or I would have went and dealt with it. That's my real answer. Right, right. But it's a real thing that the one nigga I can't never catch outside, he's still talking about he on my house and shit. But the niggas who really would fight like Chop 9 and them, they done came out and told everybody, man, I, that shit, we was joking. I, I don't know nothing about this, man. Right. The niggas who really would fight a nigga in the street, they done came and told the truth. And so, you know, whoever else want to believe, whatever they want to believe, and that's where they at. And I don't got no energy for that. And I don't have a problem until a nigga make me know I got a problem. Right. Well, 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 look, this is where I first got introduced to Byron Cole at, right? I don't know if this was the clips that I just kept catching, but that was the image of you in my head. Hit me up. So I was going on, every, I was, it seemed like every time I was going on Instagram, I was seeing this dude, like, running to, like, police scenes and shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I got on. He, like, I'm about to sell, like, three of them every time something was happening on some police shit. I see this nigga, you know, running up. I'm like, man, this nigga gonna go to jail. Like, I don't know you at the time. I like, started that so shit. I'm like, this nigga gonna go to jail. This nigga, what he doing? I've struck the justice. So that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm on the boat looking at this shit. So that's how and I And by I, the time you caught thing. me on the gram, I had been doing it on Facebook for 10 years before that. Right, right, right. So what, 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 what that's about? That's, that's Let me tell I you what that's about. My mama was the oracle. So before there was the internet, before there was social media, people would call my house and say, Mama D, such and such about to shoot such and such on Law Street. Please come around here. Can't nobody do nothing with them. That's how that started. I have niggas get shot in the seven, and they call my house before they call the police. I get to the scene. Go look at my old videos before any tape, before any police. You see them pull up on my video. Mm-hmm. Go look. That was just, you said first one to the scene, first one on the scene. Right, 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 right. I just started recording it because every time I go to city council and talk about the real conditions in our city and what causes it, the abject poverty and the second-class citizenry and shit, they tell me that's not real. I say, oh, it's not? Let me show you, motherfuckers. Let me show you what's happening. What's, so, your, what's your beef with um, Empower NOLA? 
Because I see that, because Byron, you know, I fuck with you, bro. And, you know, we've talked off camera a zillion times. And I'm like, damn, Byron, you stay in conflict with a lot of people. So I saw the dude in power with Nola putting up some stuff. And I saw y'all had a problem. I'm looking like, God damn. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll be beefing with so, power with Nola about So look, Keith. B got ops like that. Wait, listen. <laughs> listen. Everybody against B, man. Like B got ops. Ops on ops. Listen. So you heard my response with Keith. I said, I don't got no beef with Keith, right? Right, you said that. I don't like Empower, you know. I don't like that nigga. Is it for a particular reason? Because he a hoe. Hoe ass nigga. If you hung with him for five days, you'll know it. Period. So, so, you, so, so, so. Let me tell you how I got there. Okay. Let me tell you how I got there. <laughs> I made a post that two different people that didn't know each other and, and, and from two different camera angles took a picture of a cop sleeping in a car near downtown. I posted that shit. It went viral. Everybody was talking about that shit. Them lazy motherfuckers. Duh, duh, duh. Dude, the next day, after coming on my thread talking shit, the next day made a post that went viral talking about, I'm old, I'm crazy, facts, I don't know what I'm facts, talking about. Facts, facts, Said that them cars was outdated, they don't use them no more. And then five different people that day sent me pictures of police riding around in them same cars. So he didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. And he was very disrespectful. And I first tried to, hey, look, bro, I don't know you, my nigga. What's happening? Inbox him. Yeah, but as me and him get to get, as he get to getting reckless, I see what his real intent is. He think again. I'm one of them social media content creators. And let's be real about something too. You see them and Reggie and all them with them numbers. Okay. But when I first seen all them boys, them boys had two, three thousand followers, and I was on my fifth page with twenty something thousand followers. I just say what the fuck I want, so they keep taking them. Now I figured out how to get my page back, so that's why I got to fifty. You see. That's the only reason right. I'm telling the truth. And so after I knew in my motherfucking heart <laughs> that I've been a freedom fighter and saw my mama go to jail at the fucking shell station on St. Bernard and Broad and told Mr. Emil to take me around the corner to my grandma because she was going to fucking jail. That this nigga who just had a chance to stand up for the people when he was on the police force sold us out and got caught trying to line his own pockets with some fucking illegal cigarettes. And now he won't come to the beginning of the motherfucking line and dictate and empower my motherfucking people. And all I see on this page is him got my black children up on motherfucking posts. Do you know this child? Right. Yeah, man. Had to check that bitch ass nigga. It, it, and everywhere he go that I'm at, I'm gonna call him a hoe till he leave. Was, was that a part? Was that a part of him trying to empower the city to? To make a difference, like for his exposure. Why he ain't do that when he was the police? Why he ain't help us when he had real power? And then I remember the the initial fucking videos with him scorning his followers for not hitting the fucking cash app. See, it's another nigga in New Orleans I don't fuck with that's a coach because he steady make posts about how his truck down and the parents won't give him no money to fix his fucking truck. And how he give children rides. But I gave children rides for 15 years as a grown man that had a job to pay for my fucking truck and was doing something really on the side for the children. Hmm. And these imposter ass niggas got everybody fucked up. I told you it's like the Drake and Kendrick shit. Who won? The first nigga to pull up and say, bitch, what you said about my fucking daughter? Ho? And with his hands on that nigga. I'll pay that. Don't play with mine like that. Real talk. Yeah, that talk don't impress me. And I ain't mean to get over you. I know you, you a yeah, real... Stand, stand on me. Like, I, I, no, I, I, I ain't mean to get no over you. Yeah. We don't got no problem. I'm so just I'll saying, that's uh, all that talking and, and Kendrick words, the cold... Man, you know how many cold niggas who could talk with the hands? Uh, talk about the hands? But they couldn't fuck with Kevin Hall. They couldn't fuck with Tyler Mack. They couldn't fuck with Dookie. I don't give a fuck how cool they said it. Bitch, I sidestep you. And then we tapped out and all that shit. But them niggas knew what the fuck was real. <laughs> you, 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 you feeling yourself on that one. I, I no, told I was we, one of the ones no, that got beat no, up. I'm just I ain't gonna I lie, I ain't have the coldest hands in the seven. But I never ran. And I was back at Stalin's the next day. Or Harden. Or Huntersfield. Wherever we was 
Hang it. What about people that feel like you're a privileged kid that came from, you went to St. Aug, you know what I'm saying? You was put in a good situation. Like, you you know, really like you're a privileged kid that feel like Byron going all hard, but at the end of the day, you come from this walk of life. You know what I say to them? I'm going to be humble. I started to say some crazy shit. Say what you say, man. Be, don't, nah, uh, I'm going to be real humble. Look. I don't even know a humble there, fucker. There, there, uh, was a old, there was an old day. You hear me? There was a what? There was an old day when there was a club in New Orleans controlled by black people. What is it called? Rumors? No, listen, listen. You got to hear me out. There was a club. For black people, the people that you see at the bunch so, ball. So oh, who's your, yeah. No, it's an unspoken club. But okay. you can see who in it by who cheering on get the speeding ticket when they go to court and they get thrown out automatically. And who you see at Gallier Hall on Mardi Gras Day and who you see at the bunch ball. It's a couple more events. But see, that's getting busted up now when people like my mom and them start dying, right? And the reason why nobody ever complained about that is because before that, we had Moon Landrew and Dutch and them at least brought that, and it wasn't nothing. And so people like my mom and Avery Alexander, they went beyond their family. Every activist that they heralded in New Orleans didn't go beyond their family. Mama was in the courthouse picking niggas to help that the state was just fucking with, you dig, for free. And so that's why what my mama was doing wasn't hypocritical. But I said all that to say, man, I got caught with pistols. Man, I sold crack to the police. I, you know, I had issues. Just my mama was Mama D. You know, I, I, you know, I was telling you earlier. I didn't have fights with some of, and this ain't about bragging, cause you know the ones that could really fight, I lost them. I just explained to you what my forte is. I'm committed. If you ain't gonna kill me, I'm. That's committed. real man shit, cause a lot, yeah. a lot of people don't like to admit to a loss. Yeah. On no, no well, when you got niggas like Kevin Hall and Jody Harris. And Tyler Mack and Duke, I done said these names over and over. These niggas, I dare any nigga our age. I seen them niggas go all uptown, all across the river, all in the ninth wall. These seven wall niggas and knock niggas out in front they partners. You know. So what led you to fighting them though? Like with you being the kid you was. Like how how do you get into no listen with so, these type of niggas? So I okay, so they was my friends, man. Right first, you know when you little, just who by your house? That, you know that's your friends, right? But, like, sometimes it'll get to a point like, well, so when, buck, when Buckwheat snuck me, when Buckwheat snuck me, he liked a girl. You know, I don't know where these people at now. Buckwheat deceased, but I don't know where the girl at. She might be married. I ain't going to say her name. You heard me? He liked a girl. So my cousin had an apartment behind a house. And, you know, all of them was selling crack. It's the real to it. And so... In the morning time, she used to come by in the morning and ask me cut her, could she cut up her quarter, you dig? And stand out there on Columbus and Rush Lake, make her a little 600 and go home. I appreciated her hustle. But Buckwheat liked at her. And so he thinking she coming out the house. You know, you know, I'm the only nigga in there. He thinking something going on. And it wasn't even that type of party. I, I just respected the Gangster, gangster, gangster. Pretty little chick like my wife, you dig? And come out there with a whole quarter every other day. <laughs> Handle our business, you hear me? So he snuck me behind her, you hear me? And then, you know, another one of them niggas snuck me because one day I came outside with some food. I don't really remember what kind of sandwich. And I said no bus up. And a nigga tried to... Try to break the fucking rules. And everybody else, I had watched it. Them niggas go through their one time of that. And, man, I really wanted my fucking sandwich. I made, I stepped on that bitch. Didn't nobody get it. And I lost, though. But he told them same niggas, man, y'all some hoes another time. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you earn your respect that way just by being a man and standing yeah, up to Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I, I lost. Ain't, ain't no kind of, I can't, no kind of way say I got I got a couple licks in the beginning, but they ain't cut nothing. I lost. <laughs> that nigga didn't have no scars. But he beat up. You was like Devin He Hain. beat up niggas who, 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 I knew, who I already knew had beat me up. And then a whole bunch of niggas couldn't say nothing, though. That's how they live their life. Every day in the summertime, when niggas get the ribbon, they don't want to say nothing. 
Scared that they can't even participate now. Right, right. They don't want to catch one. Yeah. <laughs> Scared a nigga going to be like, bitch, I've been waiting on you. You heard me? I got shit. I got shit. What happened in the Seven War? You in the Seven War? This, this shit that went just crazy. I think the news picked it up the whole nine. There's some white girls in your neighborhood that's not from your neighborhood that came in the neighborhood and the rising, uh, ride, mid, ride Miss Daisy shit. T-shirts went crazy, the whole nine. What happened? What made that happen? And, and how it transpired to what it was? First, I got to say this. You know, I, I just really realized, believe it or not, I just really realized everybody watching. And my past and everything, believe it or not. And my, my mentors, everybody watching. So I have to say this. In my truly from my heart, I pray for her. And I forgive her. And I don't have no ill will against her because I've watched a deterioration in her life, starting with a divorce from... She lived on your block, right? Yeah, as her husband left her because he... he, he, he because she showed them buns? Well, because he worked for the federal <laughs> prosecutor. Oh, I just asked. Federal prosecutor. Like she showed them buns. And so, you know, that behavior just, was, I guess, was too much. They got a divorce, and I'm sure there was a splitting of the property. And then, you know, she stopped combing her hair, and cut it like a boy, and now she's dating a girl. And so I really pray for her that she can just find peace and harmony. I wanted to say that first. Really. Right, okay. So... What that bitch did was it was her fucking birthday, right? You just went left. No, I didn't. Okay, oh, shit. I'm that telling the left. truth. Yeah. I mean, every I swear I meant yeah, what you, I said. You gave, you gave her praise, and then you just no, I didn't give her praise. I said sincerely where I'm at in my heart. But nigga, they, got, they still got to stay with the woman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now what happened? Yeah. So it was her birthday. I'm gonna try to give a quick synopsis. It was her birthday. Jazz Fest was affected because of COVID. She decided, without a permit, that she was going to have a jazz fest, is what the sign said. Party. For her birthday, where she owns three properties on the block, and they're all rented out Airbnb, so she, done, she getting paid. Got an audience for her jazz fest, automatic. Uh, for her birthday. Now... What the ironic thing about it was, was that white people from across Broad, white people from across St. Bernard, white people from across Miro, white people from across Bayou Road, all made their way to that party. It was packed if you saw my video. Right. Right? Yeah, have a lot of them. But in between, we know where these white people stay. In between all them white people is a black lady, a black family, a grandma that you could invite and would have brought cookies. You heard me? None of us, not, did you see anybody black there on my video? None but you. But you saw a Chinese lady, you saw a dude in a native costume, walking around acting like he was Indian. All right? So now, what, <laughs> what brought my attention to this, though? In the illness. What brought this to my attention? Is people think I went down there and was looking for this. That's not what happened. That's what, it, that's, what, that, that's what it looked like. I'm laying in my bed. It looked like you it looked like you just went fuck with them. I'm laying in my bed. It's a Saturday afternoon. I'll never forget it. College football was on. I was trying to watch it, but I was tired. My phone kept ringing. You know, I don't have no old lady. You know, my daughter at home. I, I know she in the room. So I'm just letting the phone ring. I'm tired. But my phone get to ringing so much that I'm thinking if this the same person, that might be an emergency, right? When I get up and look at my phone, Miss Adams... Miss V and the lady around the corner that cooked the food, Miss Julie, all missed calls. When I called the first one back, you know what I realized they called her to tell me? Go get these disrespectful crackers. That's what they, they don't speak like that. They don't curse. But they was that mad about what they had experienced because each one of them, well, no, that's a lie. For Miss Adams, it was her daughter that tried to go through and couldn't get through. For Miss Julie, it was her herself that couldn't get through. And for Miss V, she had sent her granddaughter to the store. And that was before they put the car there and stole the barrier from the city and put it there, right? 
And when she went through, they pounded her car and said, hey, party crash. You know that crazy shit white people do yeah. when they've been drinking and shit? Right. That's what pissed me off. Miss V been living in that neighborhood her whole life, Seven Ward. She went to Clark, graduated with my mama. So when she told me, go down there, she didn't say go cuss them. But she, she said, go, go get go that right. Yeah, go go check get it, it right. Yeah, go check that. So when I get down there, you hear the whole offer of me tacos and margaritas. Fuck your people. Come join us. Try to rub all up on me. It's all on my video. You heard me? Yeah, I saw it all on not, not, not No respect. No respect for the fact that these people that sent me down here raised me, bitch. What the fuck you on? You disrespectful. I don't drink whole, and you probably can't cook. Fuck your tacos. That's, and I ain't home. I, and wait, I gotta say this because my mind goes farther than the average nigga. What I instantly saw was her trying to sexualize herself for some pussy you really ain't gonna give me. But I could get it if I wanted it, though, which I proved at the end. When I made that hoe so hot, she, she showed me that ass. But, <laughs> but on top of that, I saw transplant perception of me, typical. Get a nigga to sway by giving him a couple dollars and a drink ass New Orleans nigga. And I had to say, ho, do you know who the fuck I am? So then I first broke her down with intellect. Where you from? I'm from here. No, you're not, bitch. 53. That's my great grandma house. Where you really from, ho? Arkansas. Right. You heard me? So ain't nobody that's critiquing me that watched that video ain't realized that before I went off on this hoe, that hoe broke her credibility level all the way down. Right. So now the whole drinking and driving because she moved the car, stole city property, indecent exposure. There was one more charge. Oh, yeah. Children were present. That's another. That's an additional charge. The minors. Y'all saw me call her. The police on her and no charges filed. That's what really happened. Uh, yeah, that, that, that went crazy viral. Like, you know what I'm saying? To a level where... After that particular situation, what I was seeing on social media the whole night, it was like, this nigga Byron Cole, it, you know, from that particular incident and other things that happened later on, people was like, this nigga uh, Byron Cole is like a Charleston White of New Orleans. So, you know, Charleston White is real controversial. Like, do Listen, you compare yourself anywhere to that brother? Nah, and the only reason why <clears throat> is because, rightfully so, he admits he's a comedian that's on his page. Yes. And when he says stuff like, send me the dress right now, size small, but send my check first. See, I, I can't even make them kind of jokes. Real I'm, not, I'm a New Orleans nigga, dog. You feel me? I, can't, I don't joke like that. New Orleans nigga make them jokes. Hey, yeah, yeah, but not this kind. And if you come force that <laughs> shit on me, I'm going to know what it's hitting for you with you. Right. you don't be seeing them niggas acting like... No, I didn't say I don't see him. I just said I don't I'm not, hang not with him. Right. You're not that type. I don't hang with him. You are who you rock with is my hashtag. So, so just to clarify that, them niggas who act like that, they wouldn't act like that as a real man. That's what I always say. Like, you wouldn't even do them type of things. Like you said, your, yourself wouldn't even allow you to make them kind of type of quotes. Well, how can I make that kind of statement and want to be taken seriously by my peers? Nah, real shit. That's what yeah, I'm saying. No, you're ain't you're no much game. older brother, too. Like but wait, but wait. Not just don't have nothing to do with age. I've been like this, man. You know how many times I've been in fucking jail for what they call civil disobedience? When they wasn't even fucking with me or my children, I just happened to be in a restaurant and didn't like the fucking way they played with that black lady. Or, you know what I'm saying? And didn't leave them hanging. They left. I went to jail. But I made my point after I got out, paid them their 250 and got all that shit fixed right and went and attacked that, that enemy. I don't just be doing nothing. And I've been doing this way before th that I was on Instagram. That's on some shit like, so we was walking down... One of them side streets off Bourbon or something, and uh, you saw a, a female getting attacked, uh, get, getting getting messed over by her old man, getting you know abused. You stepping in. Let me tell you something. First of all, if I didn't want to, and my wife was with me, the first thing she gonna say is, "Bay, help her." I've been in the situation, and so I ain't gonna lie to you. That's a complex question for me. One day. Me and this nigga named Blaine was going to the club, and we seen this dude beating the fuck out this girl. And when I say beating the fuck out, I'm exaggerating, because she wasn't bloody yet, and 
She wasn't on the ground. But he was she, dealing and, with her. And, and she was fighting back, though. He was dealing with her. And so Blaine, she was pretty. And Blaine, this nigga, uh, nigga thinking with they dick. I said, B, stay out there. Stay out there. So I'm the kind of nigga, if I go with you, I'm with you. Because you are who you rock with. That's why I learned to select my people like your boy. You heard me? But he just, we parked. He jumped out and ran over there on the people, man. And so I got to go with the nigga. Of course, the banger in the car because we going in the club, right? And as soon do hear Blaine coming, and it don't look like he the slightest bit of worry. And I know why, because as soon as we got up, dude came up. You heard right. me? He said, nigga, I ought to fucking pop you, bitch. He said, this is my wife. Yeah, my business, nigga. She fucked my blood, brother. My little brother came out my mama, nigga. Mind your motherfucking business. Oh. And I just stood there for a minute and prayed to God this nigga didn't shoot Blaine because he was going to have to shoot me. I'm a witness. I'm still. I came there with the nigga. Situation. Yeah. And so, dog, that girl, that particular girl, I felt like she had a dude wasn't holding her. She was in a mix with this nigga. She could have just ran. And I hoped and wished that's what she would have did, but she didn't. And Blaine ran over there and almost got us killed, bro. That's, I'm going to just leave that with that. Right, right, right. so, talk. so, because yeah. you never know what that person, you know, situation. Man, the man said it was his marriage license right. wife, and she fucked his little brother. Yeah. Drunk and fucked his little brother. And I could see it in his eyes. He wasn't lying. He was crying. He, yeah, he was out of his top. Yeah, he was out of his top. And I realized right then, and then man, this nigga could kill me. Right. I'm At fucking with time? this fucking stupid ass nigga right here trying yeah. to get, he, he wanted to fuck the girl because she was pretty. Yeah, right. Yeah, his motivation probably, wasn't he right. He tried to save her off for her prettiness. Yeah, his right, motivation right. wasn't right. That wasn't his little cousin he knew, or he didn't know the background, and he fighting for the right motivation. That that kind of fight is, is like a chicken with their head cut off. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. You would want to. I ain't going to lie to you. And my wife has seen me do this. It's not what you do. It's really how you do it. I've walked up to brothers that was fighting brothers. And brothers that was having issues that I saw was about to be complex with women. And it ain't what you tell a brother. It's how you say it to him. If you start off telling the truth and say, man, you know what? I did that in 91. I was in jail for 13 fucking days. And then I had to pay $500 to get out. Then I had to buy classes. And every time I finished one set of classes for 300, they gave me another set of classes for 300. And I had to take a divorce class, and me and the chick wasn't even married. Yeah. This yeah. Shit I say I had no, I had noticed you from the uh, pulling up to the scenes, the uh, crime scenes and shit like that, and different things. That what, come what, from people calling my mama since I was a little boy. That's how you come. got into the hood report shit, or that's different? Like, how you got into the hood report shit? Well, okay, I got into the hood report because... <clears throat> Let the people know who don't know what it is, to, what we talking about. The hood report is liberated news, period. No spin. It's on a video. You seeing what's really happening. No matter what I say, you still seeing what's really happening. Ain't no edited video. You know what I'm saying? Live. Um, it ain't prepared. And I got the little thing on the screen. It's live. It's live. Bow. We right here. That's what I was doing. I wasn't, I ain't getting no scanner. People was really calling my house. I ain't going to lie. At first, it wasn't for me. They was telling my mama. But I, I'm sitting there, and they tell me, Mama D, such and such just shot such and such on Law Street. That's three blocks away. Yeah, I'm going to see what's up. Go and see what's up like every other nigga, when, especially when you know the two niggas. You right. feel me? That you've heard. How you and Mike Willis got a problem? <sighs> Man. <laughs> Mike Willis is kind of to me like. That nigga? Huh? That nigga? That nigga what? Like, oh, that's why you about to say like he, he that nigga. <laughs> nah. I was going to be real relevant and acute. Talk your shit. I don't know. Talk shit. I'm going to talk the real. Talk your real shit. M- Mike Willis, I think. Had a problem with me. Me to know all your little wounds. I know a lot about him because I fuck uh, with him. Listen, Mike Willis had a problem with me at one point, and I don't think that's true any longer because he he texts me and told me, "Look, man, we good. I don't have no issue with you. I, I take what he say for face value." But how did we get off track? How we got off track was. Alan Barry, children fell in the river. And Alan Barry went around to everybody to try to get help because the city stopped the search after two days. 
I think I saw that boy in the new on the new on in the in the footage or something. And so, believe it or not, and y'all can talk to Alan Barry whenever you want. He called me one day and said, "Man, I need you to help me." I said, "What's the matter?" He said, "Man, they stopped looking for my children, B, and I can't get no make no noise." So I said, "What you want me to do?" He said, "Come see me." I said, "Where you at?" He said, "I'm on the levee." So I went out to the levee and looked at Alan in his eyes. And you know, man, like I know Mr. Mina to be a real cat, right? And we he, we didn't seen had some experiences where shit wasn't always just calm, right? Where we seen things, but I ain't never seen him just cry, right? And so the, you know, I'm knowing what was hitting the fuck with this man. He lost his children in the river, and, yeah, for real. and he, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't crying, but he talking like a real man. He ain't stuttering or nothing, but he can't stop the stream. Just can't stop it. And I asked him, you call me out here. All the people else, why you call me? He said, man, I call all them, B. They wouldn't come. I said, well, what you think I could do? He said, do what the fuck you do. I said, man, do you know what I do, nigga? He said, yeah, do it for me, please, bro. I said, man, look. They're going to say I'm rep hunting, I'm clout chasing, because I'm from across the river. He said, man, look, ain't you an investigator? I said, yeah. He said, where are your contracts? I went home, got a contract. He told me exactly what he wanted me to do. One of the things was keep the press off him. There was a few things, but, you know, I won't get too personal. But I got the contract. And the reason why he called me out there was to keep some of the heat off his family who were going through a tremendous time, right? And niggas was really coming out there, name brand niggas that you know with followings from New Orleans was coming out there doing sneaker commercials and shit and rep hunting. He asked me to disrupt all that. That's how I got a lot of my haters. So when I got out there, it was a dead issue. Wasn't nobody out there but Alan and his closest still looking for his children. That's day two, right? I start making posts, and my followers start coming out. They was loyal. That's why you said earlier it don't translate to nothing because the thread be jumping, but they don't be at the courthouse. But maybe they scared to go to the courthouse, but they come out for other shit. You feel me? And they came out for Alan's children. Thank you to all my followers that did that. A lot of the next we, we went from 10 people one day to 40. Why they called it off so fast? Now, so I told you earlier, I would always say when I was speaking, um, you know, opinion or fact, my opinion is black children. Fuck. You saw that the last white boy fell in there, they looked for him for a week without nobody pressuring them. You know? Then we had another family, black family that came in my DM after that. Their husband worked at a plant somewhere. Remember? And in a... He fell in the river at work off the barge, and they stopped the search on him the next day. And they came in my DM and asked me to help them. You know? But where I was at? You are talking about the kids. Yeah, so, so I got out to Allen, and I just got to tell the truth because people are divided all over. And you said that's what this podcast is about. Yeah, you're talking about Mike Willis. How that shit? First time I met Mike Willis. First time I met P-Town Mo, for real. First time I met, they the biggest names. I apologize. And I ain't singling them out. It was about six more niggas that now got 20,000. And people think they somebody, right? That was out there? Yeah. Because I made a post. Because Alan asked me. Whatever I needed to do, get the attention back on his children. And so instead of me going out there trying to act like this is my event and I got a contract, I made a post the first day saying, come on. Um, MC Shaky came out there. Successful Five came out there. P-Town Mo came out there. But P-Town Mo, Successful Five, and a couple other niggas in particular came out there straight at my head, dog. Thinking I was rap hunting. First thing... P-Town Mo said was, what y'all got this nigga out here for? That's how he, that's how he addressed me. 
I couldn't believe it. When I done bought this nigga record and was out of town pumping, talking about this New Orleans, you hear me? I couldn't believe he did me that, really, in real life. So I was took back by that. But the real kicker was Mike Willis. This nigga come out and said, y'all got this clown. <laughs> That's how the first words he said to me. Swear to God. Y'all got this clown. Now, ain't nobody, everybody that came out there for their likes and all that, and the motherfuckers doing news interviews out there and shit. And by the way, I'm declining news interviews. I don't want no press. Could have been on that three times. Just like with the Cardell Hayes case. I, I hate to jump around, but Cardell Hayes had Sports Illustrated come to the city. And everybody that you saw do an interview for Sports Illustrated was asked with the sincerest love to not participate in that. They called my phone for three months because they knew I was the biggest name, right, of those people with the following. And I stayed true the whole time is my point. Same with Alan. But anyway... Nigga come up addressing me. What y'all got this clown out here for? Don't know. I'm hired. Just working pro bono. But contractual. Contractual. <laughs> you hear me? Right, right, Real right. talk. Right. I'm like, what the I'm fuck? I'm just laughing at the word, the way he said it. If you saw the video, them niggas called the police on me and everything. I was in the cuffs at one who time. Who called the police? One of them niggas. That didn't, uh, I can't say for who. You know, I don't give false charges. But one of them, one of your fucking influencers called the police on me. Police pulled up. No cap. I called the first district. I said, look, man, I'm being handled illegally. What did they say when they got there? What did they, what did they call? Like, I, they, saw, I saw a little bit on live. Listen, let me tell live. you how dirty the fucking police is. I called a captain of them officers that was right there. He told them to stand down. Right. And they had so much pressure from them niggas out there that was supposed to be on Allen's side that they still put the cuffs on me and made me sit there for 20 minutes. And I'm listening to the 10th highest motherfucker on the police force telling them, uncuff him. He hasn't broken any law. I'm listening to this clear as day. So I'm knowing I'm going to get out the cuffs, but they still proving their little point and trying to drag me around in front of Prolong, everybody. Prolonging the Yeah. Right, right. You heard me? And so... That's how I be getting to these problems, man. Let me tell you something. I'm 53. I got grandchildren. I done sent people to college. I done had a mortgage. Okay. I done been to the title company. These niggas been renting, living what they moan. Don't have no experiences. They want to dictate what happens for my community. You know, and they don't have a leg to stand on. And I've clashed with them kind of niggas. But B, you, you, as far as P-Town Mo, Successful Five, and all them other names you named, you never had no problem, no interaction with them ever before Probably. this time, right? Yeah. Take me out. With P. Tom Mo, no. Right? So, even with Mike Willis, right? Never no, into never. this problem. So, what, what is giving them the reason to put that stigma on? They didn't, they didn't pull up together. P. Tom Mo pulled up and said one thing, and then you saying Mike Willis pulled up and said the exact same thing. Why y'all got this clown out here? So, what a nigga going off... To label I you as a clown. You, I told you that. They had me caught up in that, in that content creator. I don't make oh, no... Oh, you didn't say that about oh, with yeah, them too? All of them. All of them. I, you ever seen me make a skit on my fucking page? Yeah, I, you see them niggas make skits? They're entertainers, man. I don't got nothing against them, but we're not in the same game. And so I have to take notice that they understand that my fucking movement is strictly selfless. I don't make a dime. I don't got no GoFundMe, no grants, no nothing, right? And why fuck with me when so much other shit to fuck with out here? Maybe because you're so controversial on your stance on what you, you stand for. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it don't be directly in agreement with what Well, man, look, feel. let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. And I just got to be 100, man. We can't, and it don't have to be. Neither. We can't have right. false conversations. No, it's not it, false. It, look, listen. So wait, this is what I'm trying to tell you, right? <laughs> you know, I don't want no problems, man. I try to be a peaceful man. But I'm really from New Orleans, dog. Nigga don't have no problem with me. 
I don't have no problem with I, No, I don't see no nigga that got no problem with me. Because I'm touchable. Yeah, right. But I don't see no nigga that no problem with me. Right, because you realest, do show up, you show up everywhere. The like, realest niggas in my city that I know running shit, that I know a nigga won't play with in back of town, that I know a nigga don't play with at all in the third world, they love me. You know that the respect. ones that's older than me call me little brother. The ones that's younger than me call, call me onk. onk. You know what I can respect about you? When I was out of town when I don't know what storm that was last, you know what I'm saying? But, you know. Either. Either. That's so, why they hate me. So, but Let me cut you off. That's why they hate me. Byron Cole, the nigga that's irrelevant, that don't make sense, that's crazy, hood report. had a fucking hood report, had a fucking 18-wheeler pull up in front of his house off his motherfucking name. Okay. And with that 18 No grant money, and, and no listen, 501c3. When that 18 wheeler pull up, who got the credit for the 18 wheeler pulling up? Who who got the, the gas? glorification of Larry Morrow. Okay. Oh, so right. that was his that was his works? I, listen, well, he got the, listen, he got listen, wait, so wait, hold up. This is what I gotta record. say. He brought up a new topic, so let me give clarity. This is what really happened. The dudes who set this up for me, they really, they really they really dictate what happens in New Orleans a lot, right? And they're good dudes. They don't, they're not on Instagram. They're not for no bullshit. So they said, B, look, we want to help the people. I'm not trying to steal nobody credit. I just knew that I got the right big brothers. You heard me? They said, B, we want to help the people, but we don't want to be in it. We got a truck of gas. My nigga run the plant in such and such. Got a truck of gas coming to New Orleans for the people. I said, man, how the fuck am I going to get the people gas? He said, we're going to have a thing on it. I said, what I'm going to do? He said, you can park it under the bridge. Just let people pull up B and fill them up and let them go about their business. I said, well, I'm going to make a post. They said, uh-uh. I don't want no post. So I woke up that morning. Big brother called me and said, look, don't fuck around. Truck on his route. Houston ain't far. You, you know, be strategic. Don't drop the ball. I said, yeah, I got you, big brother. I get a call right while I'm about to go to the bridge and ready. The police that intercepted my fucking truck. When they get to Orleans Parish, talking about they didn't have a permit. It wasn't going to somebody to be sold. Or there's some kind of bureaucracy with right. the gas. The mayor sees the gas, filled up all the city vehicles, fuck the people now, and then gave Larry Morrow $500 of gas to give away, to make him look like a baller so y'all would go to Mondays and to all the motherfucking places. And that was my motherfucking gas that my big brothers gave to a nigga who they knew was real that wasn't going to play. And that's just one of the semis. The other one actually made it to my door. And I gave away a truck full of fucking everything you need when you have a disaster right, right in front of my house. Off my name. No corporation. No uh, 501c3. No grant. No nothing. Off me being Mama D's son and sticking to the Jeep code even when she wasn't here. Right, right, right. right. That's why them niggas don't like me. Damn, they, accept, they, they, they also don't like me because niggas from your hood. Where you from? From Harvey. Why are you saying Not because niggas from your hood. I done been part of helping them give the state back 40 and 50 years where I worked cases for five, six years and didn't charge a dime and send green dots out of my own pocket. What a part of the hood that is. You gave me a credit card. You, you gave me a Walmart card. Yeah, Listen, you know what that was from? I got a call. From, again, a pastor that don't want to be identified. But when I Googled it, his church got 5,000 members. I woke up one day and he said, you know what? We've been watching you and you're doing great works. He said, I don't believe we have the same political views. views, But I see you really helping your people in New Orleans. And ever since Katrina, y'all been in trouble. That man sent me thousands of dollars of $25 gift cards right. that I did not spend. You, not gave, you gave me two. One. You gave me two of them. And the, and, the, and the chicks I know that have babies and shit that I meant to give them two, they hit me up for two more and I gave them four. Right. A hundred dollars. You hear me? Right. So they got to create these campaigns. That's why I brought up Chop and We Hate Rats. They joined the campaign that they came back and told everybody it wasn't real. And 
that's why so many are against me because when it's real and you go in the street and you try to get a nigga to do somebody something in the lower night ward but you don't know they mama from the night ward and they been in the night ward their whole life even though they from the seven them niggas tell you bitch you better get on before we fuck over you ho and come tell me right yeah right that's some real shit that's some real shit gotta respect it gotta respect it I could do so much with that but I don't because I saw what I needed to see. The real niggas who ain't scared of the truth don't have no problem with me. I don't just walk up disrespecting nobody. I've disagreed with this nigga adamantly, but didn't disrespect you, did I, bro? No, you didn't. I'm not scared of this nigga, man. Right, right. He just never disrespected me. Right. So we got a, a, a mutual thing we doing yeah, we here. Yeah, a strong argument, though. Yeah, but we didn't disrespect each other. What was my point in that argument? My, my Like, you know... You know, <clears throat> hold on. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. He you, talking about the Trump. You had difference with some shit that was going on. I was like, B, the ultimate goal is. Nah, I'm going to tell the truth. Now, see, he said we capping, doing he it. Capping, Look, right. no, he ain't capping. He, he ain't capping, but he left a lot out. So, I I, was so what I was just standing up, on, what I was just standing on business, that my name is good. He was that, that hold on, that I could get on the fucking internet tomorrow and for a really the deserve, Internet wasn't in there. Hold up. Wait, listen. I could get on the internet tomorrow and for a real deserving mama that have something really tragic go down that she didn't plan and everybody could see it ain't no game and get her three quick racks to help her get a new apartment. That I, thought I could do that. You heard me? And so I got to tell the beginning of this story. We doing an event, me and my mama, who everybody say was one of the realest, right? Right. All right. We doing an event. Mama the D. police come on some false shit saying we had barbecue grills and all kind of shit we ain't have, right? Right. Okay. And shut my shit down just because they mad because I got him there. Mr. Cool was in the interview. Um, uh, uh, your boy that make the beats for No Limit. Uh, 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 he KLC. Was in, not Kelsey. Uh, not Kelsey. Shout uh, out to Kelsey, though. Not KLC, but the other one I live on this side. Black and Mild? Not Black and no, Mild. No, no, no. The side. original No Limit. Beats by the uh, Beats by the Fire. Uh, Carlos? Carlos. Yeah. Listen. So me, my mama. Story, my nigga. Look, me, my mama, who is a star. My mom, my mama is a star in her own right. I got mystical him and Moby, right? And they listening to us on the radio. We cutting the fuck up. I'm lying. It's a great day. And by the time we get to the park to give the trumpets away to the children, the police then came and. In an aggressive manner, pulling up. The director of NAR talking about they shutting us down for having a grill and shit that we ain't even have out there, bro. And ran off my kids. You know, seven more them children's police going home, right? And so the white people who fronted us the trumpets, right, told me, just pick any kids out the crowd and take a picture with them. I said, man, I can't fucking do that. I can't do that shit. Right, right. That's what really happened. Now tell your story. So ultimately, what I was trying to say is this: regardless to, you know, because we can't stop the situation that would happen. So what happened? What was, he did was he made you me let me talk. I never took the pictures. Let me talk, brother. Let me talk. <laughs> he dancing. I'm yeah. not dancing. I'm, I'm summing it up. He buffering it. I'm saying at the he end of the buffer. day, he need a buffer. Because I go to the end of the day because regardless of what the reason was. Whatever happened was what it was. Yes. So what happened was they ended it or whatever, and we had some kids out there. Every kid out there got a trumpet. So yeah. he was arguing or about... Or a drum. We had two or drums. Or a drum. So he said they was arguing about, like, they did this. Then I'm like, listen, B, we can't trip over what happened. The ultimate goal is that we did give kids trumpets. Kids left here. We don't have one trumpet left. All the kids got the trumpets. All the kids got a drum. So at the end of the day, mission still complete. Let's not make a big deal about what happened. Let's just the purpose be, over power. The purpose. Order. He was right about that. But let me tell you what I figured out. This is what I figured out. I'm gonna tell you the truth. So look, now we gonna get deep. You know why I respect him? Cause I had to make a decision as a man and settle for a little bit of what I wanted. But I didn't have to compromise, but I didn't get all I wanted. Meaning what, though? So the kids got the trumpets, but I ain't take the false pictures. And so what I really wanted to say was my mama told me not to fuck with it at all. I let this nigga talk me into going ahead and just not cutting up like I would have, right? 
But this is what I found out later, though. And he was right. I ain't going to lie. I don't want to diminish from what. The kids got the instruments. And one of them I seen in a French quarter making big money. They had like $500. Oh, one of them instruments. Yeah, off the one of them drums, yes. That's a drum. Until a fucking grown man. This is another story, but it remind me. It's a fucking grown man from here that's in a fucking tribe. Stole his fucking drum. Damn. After we give it to him. But anyway. Um, where was that? Uh, I'm trying to make a punt off of the kids getting what they got. And, um, but you're still in. Yes, yes, yes. But later what I found out was. So the foundation that gave us the instruments. They started off in Chalmette, one of them little matchboxes, right? Now they live in the edge of Orleans Parish, over there by the white folks, where you think you're in Jefferson Parish by the, by the DMV, but you're really not. You know them first couple blocks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where they live now, right? And my mama helped me to see the correlation that that's why they needed the picture for the funding. That's why they were so adamant. The white bitch was really adamant, remember? Right. Like, her, more than her husband, because her husband saw he was in a black park, and I ain't give a fuck. Right, right. The wife was the one. She wanted the picture. The, picture the white girl, I, I want my pictures, Byron. Listen, I didn't never give a care about a picture. Like saying, like, this is what we done yeah. for her to get the war. Yeah, so I why didn't care about I had, no picture. Why I had to disrupt the pictures, no, though? I oh, he was that. right I about... But, but right I understand that, too, though. He was right at the end of the day. I ain't gonna lie. No, that's facts, but I understand But at that. the end of the day... The reason why black people can't come up is because of that compromise right there. Well, when the slave master say, if you want, you know, and and the thing about it is what people can't differentiate for me is that I don't get no stipend. So I'm not fighting for the principle of this because I I don't want to fuck up my money, bro. You fucking up my money. I'm fighting for the principle that I'm understanding that this is the concept right here that holds me down. This white motherfucker just telling me in front of my get my celebrity guests, just fake a picture, Byron. Come on, you can pick any kid. Ain't that what this white lady was telling me? She was. And I wasn't with that wasn't my, so what, my and, and what the picture was gonna do? So they can put it in their newsletter for their five oh one C three to say what they did, right. they what get they more, did they get and more get support. more money. And so after that I saw them with a couple major artists in New Orleans. Getting, the other, getting, getting more pictures. <sighs> to get a bigger woo. They live over there in New Orleans Parish where right. you think you in Jefferson and their house fire. Yeah. Right. And they started all. I, I, I'm an investigator. Their previous address before that was out of town. But the daddy come from Chalmette. That was his previous address before that. Now he live in top of the line. I think that still might be considered Lakeview. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. All right. And it's off of 501c3. Do, do, fix do you, a nigga. Do, do you have a problem with people elevating off of whatever that their mission may be? You know what I'm saying? You yeah, know. if the people ain't coming up, if you, if you elevating and the people who you standing for rising, I'll leave you alone. They say, I, they say that's I know Norris from 72. From 72? You know, the, the reentry program? I know he ain't right. I ain't going to sit there and talk all this dirt. But you know what? He's helped some people do some things that they wouldn't have been able to do without him. So I excuse him. Lesser of an evil for me. I don't be after niggas' heads. And if you got any worth in you, I'm going to find you. You're an older person, and I don't know when that shit started about I'm from New Orleans, not Louisiana, and you're an older person. So you feel like that or how that shit, you know what I mean? So let me tell you something. Are you from New Orleans area? I'm from Harvey, from West Bank. That's you, not New Orleans. You ever heard? I'm from Harvey. That's not New Orleans. If you don't speak, don't keep key stay on your side of the street. You ever heard that saying? No, it's more old, old here. Well, old. then you're not nah, from New Orleans. Some old you heard that before, ain't you? I heard that. All right. So. You know I'm going to hear it just because I'm from New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. He heard it before. But I did hear it, though. Yeah, I'm old. Yeah, because I seen niggas have to draw them lines in projects and shit where the people live right across the court from you, and people be sitting on their side, and you see the motherfuckers sitting over there, and they don't speak, and because the, the, the wrong thing could start some bullshit, right? So I started with that premise because the lines I respect, I ain't draw them. I got rental prop. Well, I, I sold them. I had rental properties in Baton Rouge. And my papa lived on South 15th Street. And I've been going there my whole life. And 
you know, I've had a difficult time getting BR niggas to respect my mind. I had many a scuffles, had real issues in BR without doing a nigga nothing. And we we welcome them here. And so I met a couple good friends in BR because they, you know, not that, you know, I had to get saved, but just the same shit kept happening over and over. Nigga getting in scuffles and the nigga had to tell the nigga, man, damn, that man that stood outside, what you, what, you, what you want from him? Right. You heard me? He a real nigga, leave him alone. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't understand why any of that happened. I wasn't out there, you know, being nothing I wasn't, you know, but I will say that. You know, the little girls around my papa house, they liked me. And when we played basketball, I was good. You know, and just some scuffles be about niggas trying to figure themselves out as they growing through adolescence and shit. You feel mm-hmm. me? I don't know. But then I got grown and realized that that fucking shit was continuing. And I thought maybe they might have an issue. So when Boosie came out with, I'm from Baton Rouge, I ain't from New Orleans. I understood what he was saying. And I, I ain't draw that line, but I fucking respect it to the fullest. Got to. Right, right, right. Yeah, because I get caught up if I don't. What about the music? I was giving out where I What about the music the niggas putting out right now? They got a better they got a better music scene than New Orleans right now? Baton Rouge? I can't fucking believe you asked me that. <laughs> On the podcast. Yeah, that's real talk, though. Who they got blowing like Junior Montana? They got, they got, they got, they got. Who they got blowing like Junior, uh, Junior Montana? Ten niggas. Who? Name them. They, they, they got motherfucking name them. Uh, name them. Uh, name them. He about to name This nigga said they got, uh, they got, no, uh. No, no, because you talking. You, you cutting me off. They got Young Boy. They got, uh, Kevin Gates. Fredo Bang. They got Fredo Bang. They got Boosie. I, Fredo. Tech, got Fredo. Bang. Tech and Man. Look. So, look. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. I never diss the legends. Or the people who got tenure in the game and then proven they can make a song, right? So even if I don't particularly care for their music, I, however, um, they did what they did. Nigga got to respect it if it's real. So I, I ain't talking about Kevin because I'm not. I don't really listen to Kevin music, but my son loved that shit, and I and I influenced that nigga, and he wound up liking it. So I can't say, you know what I'm saying? And so. Boosie, for sure. One of the coldest rappers ever from Louisiana. Young boy. Young boy. Um, Got the internet on lock. Listen, listen. Young boy, I'm going to be honest. You ain't been being honest all this time? Yeah. Well, no, listen. <laughs> the, re- the reason why I say I'm going to be honest after that is because I don't know the daddy. So I'm careful with my words. You don't speak on a nigga you don't know. But what about his music? But sometimes, wait, listen. You got to know and speak on it. But listen, but sometimes I feel like he betrays himself in his music. You heard me? And I wish I could sit him down and run some things with him. But we got all these fake alphabet boys and social influencers. So he don't know who real. You think he'll sit down and talk to you? Um, I think if I could get in the same room with him, yeah. Because I ain't going to try to come stun on him. I got nothing but love for him. And then you're going to say, what y'all got this clown? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah. So, hey, Fredo Bangs, it, man. Come on. No, no, Fredo, no, no. Fredo, I'm cool with Fredo. Fredo, um, Fredo followed my little girl back for me. Oh, right, right, right. And right, helped right. her get her the likes and shit. Hey, but this, this, because this, this is the topic that's going on right now, and, I, and, and it's crazy that you said that. But wait, listen. All them niggas is niggas that prove that they can eat off making music like yourself. I don't got time to say, bro, you know, I, I, I heard another artist said this before, but believe it or not, I'm an artist, but I'm a writer. I'm not a rapper. You're a poet. poet, poet like. Look, B, we got to get out here. We're not going to tell you But this. look, hold on. I, I don't listen to other niggas' shit. And to, to get me to participate, you got to inspire me. I can feel and that. And so, I, you know, if you want me to know if I like your music, you better be able to understand that Pac, my favorite artist, and I don't like every song he made. I'm not about to fucking lie to you and play no fucking games with you. No, that's the type of time I'm on. And so I ain't seen a nigga from Baton Rouge yet make an album that I listen to all the way through, like one of his, like one of Mysticals, like one of Juvies, like one of Wayne's. Like, I ain't heard that. I feel that. But you had said... The whole album where I could listen to it. When you was when you were saying all them names at first, when we were giving them names, 
you was you was saying, but you stopped. You was like, which one of them niggas can fuck with Junior Montana, right? The no, young niggas, right? Right. I ain't right. talking about no, the proven no, niggas. No, no, the young niggas. Young boy is an exception. No, young niggas. And, and wait, hold up. I don't know where young boy from. Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Yeah, but you know where is baby mama from? We don't care. Durgeon Wall. Okay. You know where he was known to be seen hanging? Back of town. Right. You 4K Trey all day. <laughs> I'm just now telling you. Now that's real punk? facts. I want to hear your punk. Yeah, because he was saying like Junior Montana. That was the thing right now that was going on, that Junior Montana, he could rap. But he, but he can't make, make no a song. Songs. And you was about to say, like, damn, which one of them niggas got the songs was, like him? Like, yeah, like yeah. Junior Montana. And the thing is, New Orleans right now, that this nigga can rap. He just don't have, he can't make a song. I like Lil world. Wildlife, too. No, it's about Junior Montana. I know, but let me tell you something. Okay, so you say Junior can't make a song. Well, I didn't say no, that. No, we didn't say that. I'm That's telling you what people say. Right now, by you, I'm only stating that because when we were talking about the Baton Rouge dudes, you was like, which one of them niggas got songs like Junior Montana? So hold up, dog. First of all, let's keep it 100. Music that I need a fuck and pill to relate to I'm not I, I can't I, Even when I was 20 I couldn't fuck with that shit If I got to be altered To feel your fucking vibe Nigga fuck that Period The little dance fire But some niggas look real suspect With their versions That's some <laughs> whole about, shit You talking about the jig Yeah You heard me And really the ones Who I seen do it the best I, We know they loaded yeah. If I got to be that To do that Fuck all that so what you feel that Junior Montana bring to the game that they don't? Because I fuck with Junior, but see, I'm listen, trying to see your opinion on bruh, it. Bruh, I could walk up on Junior, record this, put this out. Next time I see Junior Montana, I'm going to walk up on Junior uh, on an unexpected live and say, bust something, man. Watch yeah, what he dog, do. Yeah. Watch what he do. Spit. I saw you about Manchester. What's dude. happening is Junior, look, so, yeah, let me take my glass off. Now we're talking about p- people that I respect, right? I don't understand. Just like shit just keep happening. He went to Vegas to fuck with BG. Now BG can't do music. You right. know? Yeah, getting, like, getting bad. Yeah, getting, it's just like, getting... so I don't speak on what I don't know. But I know my nigga fire. I know when I be playing rap and that shit is, you know, if it ain't the elitist of rap, my wife be like, babe, turn that shit off. And every time Junior make a new freestyle, this nigga. But is it true that, we know Junior can rap, but is it true that, Junior don't make songs the way that other people, you know, like he, he made freestyle look, man, mostly more look, than make songs. Look, man, let me, so look, now, <laughs> now we about to really jose. I'm just asking. Push, you about to push me into a joke. Fuck it, let's go, fuck it. You about to push me into a joke, dog. We got audio. So let me ask you this. This the real fucking world. We was just talking about this before. Have you, a successful nigga, went to Junior and said, look, I know you don't got no fucking bread. But I need you to stay out of trouble. Let's sign this agreement where it's strictly on the numbers that's produced. And let me take you right here. And don't try to own you. Just give me so many points on what I bring you to. Because I see Junior in situations where motherfuckers trying to make him sign his life away. I swear to God, God, that never was the position. I've tried to work with Junior on working on the uptown, downtown situation. Junior came in there. He dropped a verse. He wasn't too in tune with us to find out about the hook or to make it a song. He just laid his verse and said, listen, bro, whatever y'all put to that, I'm gone. I didn't see that as what I would respect from an artist that's trying to lock in with people to go to the next level. So look, It was just, it was so arrogant to a yeah. level where I was like, damn, I, I want to work with this cat. Like, I called him out. I reached out to him to work with him. Yeah. And I thought that that would be a great setting for us to get in and lock in and he can kind of see what a nigga vision is to help him, but he had his own little thing because maybe he feel like some of these rappers might be old, washed, you know what I'm saying, and done, and Junior got his own thing going. Can oh, wait, Junior hold rap? Up. First of yes, all, he can rap. Hold up, wait, can Junior first make of all, a song? I haven't heard one hold yet. Hold up, first of all, let me say, I don't speak about what I don't know in situations I wasn't at, but I will say this. I'm speaking on wait, it because that's what happened. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised because let me tell you why. I'm going to tell you why I'm surprised. Because that boy live and die uptown. And I done talked to him about you and your first album. You respect me. I fuck yeah, with him, Yeah, to bro, the but, fullest. But he just, it, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't enough respect of what I really do. See, Junior know me as an artist, but don't know what I do in the studio with artists. So he didn't have enough respect to see what I can do with him in the studio. He just laid a verse and left as if, like, Y'all do whatever y'all want. Bro, with you that. know what I do? I leave my you know what I do gone. for survival? 
I read and discern. That's what I do for survival. Let me tell you this, and I don't know what kind of backlash this is going to get me, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I really fuck with Junior. And I, I fuck wait, with hold Junior. Up, wait, I know. I, you don't need to vouch. I know. But I don't want that so, to go under. So the time I spend. Understood. He can vouch with you, K. No, yeah. way. He no way. I was you. saying I that's no question. <laughs> he, he proved that when he said he reached out to him to come do yeah, the song. I, that's I, I what I'm saying. That's unquestionable. I like him as all. That's unquestionable. What I'm really saying is. That's why I started off with that. I study niggas, man, and I watch. Junior got this little nervous laughter thing he do when he, you know, I don't know. It's just like, I don't really want to go too much in his head because I don't, you know, I, this is just my opinion. But Junior probably burnt out because he just, it was, you know, if you, if you like, if he don't really know you, like, it's just, you know, he was waiting to see how wide you was going to expand it and then he, Took advantage of that. You wasn't pretty much dead, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I can hear what you're saying, but you know what I'm saying? As as a, as an artist, fucking with Fuck all that. Junior, come back in the studio, dog. This nigga Cole, he done made hits. It ain't just Let's that. I so. just understand artists, and I understand sometimes what's needed to make an artist go to the next level. Like, you know what I'm saying? Every artist that I've ever worked with, my you know, my background speak for it. Every artist that I ever worked with that listen, they took it to a certain level. You know and I'm just saying that... I believed in uh, Junior Montana enough to be like, if he listened to me and opened up enough to hear what I got to say, I can help Junior Montana get to the next level say, of what he's trying to so do. So now you listen? Gonna, now he he going to make me... I hope he listened to, to, uh, on the podcast because I respect him and I like him and I think he's super talented. But I also think that he needs to sit down and open his mind to... What's the next level? How I get to the ne- next level? What I need to do to get to the next level? Say, man. And then they can help him do that. Say, bro, do you know who two of my closest is? I do not. My big brothers? I do not. Versi Carter. Okay. And Big Pokey. Big Pokey. Right. Do you know that before this year is over, they about to drop a book? You no, know, I do not. You know who wrote it? No, I do not. Me. You know what it's called? No, I do not. The muscle behind the hustle. I say that because what I think I knew about Michael Tyler when Unpredictable came out ain't what I know now. I'm quite sure. What I think I knew about, and I'm going to show you, you can't predict what I'm saying. So I always thought Sir was the less pubbed of the true, right? You know that's the true. Silk was his brother. See, Murder was his brother. Mia did a thing. So they mystical. Fiend. Fiend. What are you saying, Sir, right? with the legs, the weakest thing? No, I'm saying he was the less pubbed, right? And I'm saying this for a reason. What's less pub mean? Like. Promoted. I oh, saw right. less promoted. I saw everybody else get way more promotion. I saw that. I, I was living it too, like you, right? From the S to the E to the R to the C. But wait, but this is my point. This is my point. So when you hear mystical lyrics or see murder lyrics, and I ain't taking away from nobody. That boy had pub like a boy. Or you hear uh, Silk the Shocker lyrics or Snoop Dogg lyrics. I know that when shit really hit the fan one day, that everybody was sitting there looking and waiting for Pokey and Versi, and Sir was the only nigga really fucking swinging. Back. I can believe it. And that. not that nobody else got pumped or nothing that day, but they let them niggas do their job. But Serve ain't let them do their job. I can respect that. Yeah. I, I can believe that because I understand Serve from that side. And that's the real truth. Pokey told me that. And but they ain't got nothing to do with rap. Wait. To the S, to the E, to the R, to the P. That's all I'm saying. Ain't got nothing I'm talking to do about with rap. men in life. Yeah, and we how, understand. And how we, think we know, how we think we know a rapper, and they say this and they say that, and how... You know, niggas behind the scenes could tell you what's really going on. You need another example? No, I'm not. your friends. I, I don't no, want to No, no, no. All I, I love all these people. I fuck with all these people. They are all my peers. You know what I'm saying? Because they do the same thing that I, I do. And I don't got nothing against but none I, of them. At the end of the day, I call a spade a spade, and it is what it is. Fighting, being a street nigga, being a stand-up man, being what it is, don't have nothing to do with being an artist. As being a rapper. A rapper is his own art. It, do, it does what it do. Like, you know... We, we, we meet people See, wait, as now, artists. I, 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 if I'm an artist and I pop up, and I pop up with Let a beautiful talk, brother. I pop up with a beautiful painting, my nigga. You don't know why. You don't know why. The mic, first dude. thing you gonna say is, "B, you did that," 
If I say, yeah, you're going to be like, damn. If I say, man, really, this nigga painted it for me, though. But that's me. That's me. It never you know could be like, you uh-uh. if you ain't painted. Yeah. So because a nigga can tell me how he'll run through a nigga and he not the nigga to fuck with and all this, but then Pokey and Versi tell me how nigga had to tell him, shut up, bitch. And we going in here. And quit acting like a hoe. Listen, even if that's the case, it have nothing to do with his artistry, bro, because artistry is artistry. We don't buy into these people. We don't buy into Puff because of... Well, why you don't say fake shit on your records? I'm, I'm, listen, I'm my own I ain't version. heard you say I'm you my, got a Bugatti. I'm my own, I ain't heard you listen, say you I'm walk around own, with listen, choppers. I'm my own version of who I am. That's, that's just what it is. No, you're real. Listen, even if I'm real or fake, listen, even if I'm real or fake, I was standing on the beat. Even if I'm real or fake, I, I could be real as I am that you know me. Man, as I a hate per- that no, you downplaying no, you being I'm a not, standard no, bearer. Listen, That's what you're doing. No, I'm not down, you downplaying listen, him I'm being not, a standard no, bearer. I'm not downplaying me because this, they a got stand people. Up listen, standard bearer. Listen, listen, oh, people, like, no, like no, if I played his song, my mama wouldn't say turn it off. B, listen, they got people They got people that look at me. Standard bearer. I say he a standard bearer. They got people that look at me like this. Even though I do the music or whatever I do, as a street niggas, they don't really be understanding that until they run into me as a, on some real street shit that I got to arrive to be that person. They be looking at me, I thought you was just a rap nigga because that's the persona of what it is. They bought into the art. I make party music, nigga think I'm on some pussy pop shit until they see me a certain kind of way and be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, dude, a little realer than I thought he was. They got to learn that. People that know me from the streets respect me as a street nigga that just do party music. It's all a perception say, bro, of what people say. Listen, that. listen, dog. That's all I'm saying, brother. The first ad lib is about a pill. The second one is about licking somebody, asshole. I can't fuck with that music, man. Even I'm, when I was fucking twenty, I didn't that's fuck with I'm not saying that's I'm, party gonna, music, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say I make that. Type that's party of music. music, but I ain't never went to a party and, and didn't have a date or left with one. All, All right. I'm saying is that listen, at different times, be according to the time and when you was younger and you was out. Things was different. Niggas was licking asses and, and doing all that shit. It just wasn't publicizing it. It got to a level where artists today are talk about what they really do and they have no problem with it. And that's where we at in the Or, day or, day. or even what they really don't do. That's Be. the problem. Be. That's the problem. Man, there's no rap cap podcast. When they saying man. what they do, that's not an issue. It's there's when no them niggas get into their own man. truth, my truth. That's some fake shit. Hey, <laughs> A.V., a- like he was saying back then, it was no internet with the public side. Like you was doing that, but nigga n- wasn't n- doing that, man. My oh, yeah, that's told what, that's us, what I'm about to ask you. My pop told us short dick niggas lick pussy. You don't got to lick nah, pussy you that. touching the back. My pop really told us but that. But some niggas had short dicks. Short dicks ain't just well, come I, I, I don't in, in 2024. <laughs> short dicks ain't just appear in 2024. They've been having short dicks. Throughout the lifetime of dicks. I can't co-sign that, brother. <laughs> them <laughs> niggas, he's yes, he the truth, but them niggas should have kept that shit to themselves. But you're telling me I that. Fuck with that so what happened right. was, <laughs> so what happened was, these niggas start getting so desperate that they have to start using their cars and, 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 and That's turn, ben. To, turn to licking assholes and saying it out Ooh, loud to, the to attract in some pussy. That's the best part. <laughs> They've been doing it, B. This ain't new. They wasn't I'm doing just it, saying, B, B right not, now, not and not telling it. And then still hitting the goal nigga, with a nigga. nigga and listen, nigga, back nigga was eating. Listen, right, right. nigga was eating cat. Right, listen, Say, like, listen. Hold up, hold up. Nigga was eating cat <laughs> back in my time. Right, they was eating it. And they took a for a chick to come out on a nigga and blast him and oh, say, nigga, you pussy eating motherfucker. <laughs> and we be like, whoa. Oh, yeah. And then everybody be like, bitch, you lying. Well, bitch. that's how we you find out. Don't pass that bitch to go. We find out bitch that we find out that through time. But it wasn't because he he spoke on that and said that's how he was. So rocking. look, then all I gotta do to end this conversation is say, uh, ask anybody in the seven, B not no uh, B ain't never been a pussy licker. Never. Uh, we touch the bottom or I bow out gracefully and say, babe, I'm sorry, you know. Back then. Period. Oh, you talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to discuss what. No, no, no. Hey, you're not married. supposed to. No, no, no. Been married. Do it, I thought you were talking you about. You don't do then. it. If you don't do it, you don't do it. It's totally understandable. All I'm saying is that some niggas been doing it. Short woo or not. Short woo, long woo, <laughs> any kind of woo. They just was. That was. There was freaks. Not in the seven. And there was freaks. That, and the, come on, bro. The seven world ain't off limits. Some of his yeah, partners, some of niggas he smoked the gall with, that he passed they with, finished. they just finished. But he was kept to himself. Like pussy, and he still was like, that nigga breath smell like pussy, but hey. Shit. 
<laughs> if I know, I ain't ignoring nothing. You have to know because you wasn't there to know, but you know what you smell. But I mean, nigga ain't stupid. If we stand on the corner at 11 o'clock on Russell Blade in Columbus and a nigga pull off and he just was on the phone with a hoe and he come back, a nigga know where he been over. Who put him? Pull up and pick him up and shit. Nigga ain't stupid. Nigga looking at all the factors. B, what's the raw shit you seen in New Orleans all these 53 years? Raw shit? Oh, man, I can't even say because I've seen too many different heads split all open. And There's one that you could think of. There's anyone. Ain't got to be the raw. Just give me an up on some raw Something shit. that fucked you up. Saeed, Saeed's sister stand on the corner, laying on the corner. Me and my mom was having a, a, a party where we had higher heights and Irie daughters and had my backyard full of people. And we all of a sudden heard a whole bunch of AK shots. And little chick was laying on the ground with all this missing and her brains on the ground. And I've seen that many a times. But what was really shocking was I went down there and kids was riding their bike around her. Little kids, six years old, four years old, five years old. Nobody was crying. Nobody was spooked out. It was just normal. It was business. normalized. Yeah, that's mm. the that's the craziest. Fucked you up for people to just see that type of setting and just be like normal with it. Man, the local, the local, it's six hours for the crime lab to come to put anything over her, or anything. So the local dope fiend then came. Everybody, grandma then came. Man. Everybody that had a bike and roll around there to see it's a dead person. All the hard and park kids saying it's a dead lady on the ground. And I'm, you know, they pulling up and shit. B, what you think about the first 48 in New Orleans? Have you ever seen a TV show that wasn't designed for profit? No. See, see, see. Nah. Listen, let me tell you a true story. One of my first shootings is on Facebook. Me and my mama sitting down. She had just fried some fish and was eating the potatoes and shit. And the phone rang. And I swear, it's a true story. I, I sub-quoted it earlier, so I had to say uh, this really the truth. This was the conversation. Mama D, somebody just got shot on right under the bridge on when you're going towards Dillard. You know that first bridge by the yeah, pumping station? right. And the, my mama said, did y'all call the police? And they said, uh-uh. And if you go look at my video, I got there before anyone else. You asked me about First 48. Yeah. That dude, that night died. And I watched them retake a scene in the ambulance twice. Did you fucking hear me? Right. I went to the authorities and the, everybody, Damn. I told I So told, they was doing First 48. That was, was no, that was the medical one. Right, they were, right. but they were shooting. But something. my point is, wherever you got cameras, you got aesthetics. Wherever you got aesthetics, people are conscious right, right, of right. their actions. And so, I promise you, we watched, it's on my video, them, me cutting up, calling them bitches and hoes, where people say he crazy. Because I watched these motherfuckers say, wait, 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 we didn't have enough light. I said, wait a minute. You got a motherfucker on the motherfucking thing? The fuck y'all doing? Damn, that's rough. Yeah. Boy, look, let me tell you something. If motherfuckers would go back and look at my first videos on Facebook and all the videos I got on YouTube, they'd understand. Right, right, right. Like I say, dog, I appreciate you. We get out of this, but I appreciate you coming through and fucking sure. with us, man. Honor. I meant that. And uh, that's what it is, big brother. I go by gas to hate him, man. I miss the man of the instigator. I am the, with three E's, underscore, new, underscore, Orleans, underscore, hood, underscore, report on Instagram. You already know what to watch. Watch this, don't watch that other shit. Yeah. For what? Y'all not cowards. Y'all being real about what y'all doing. So. <laughs>